everybody. It's Blair Johnson with the Badass Records Podcast, reminding you that new episodes drop Thursdays on badassrecordspodcast.com, YouTube, and uh, find audio where you stream. Uh, today, I believe, is Thursday, September 28th, and that means there is only a day or two left to vote for Badass Records for uh, Best Local Podcast in the Pitch Casey's Best of Contest. Where can you vote? Um, Vote.thepitchkc.com. It's vote.thepitchkc.com. Look for Arts Entertainment, Best Local Podcast, and Badass Records, should you choose to cast your vote. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, uh, badassrecordspodcast at gmail.com. If you are in Kansas City or going to be in Kansas City and would like to sit down and do an in-person episode with me, that's all I got for you this week. Thank you for stopping by. Hope you enjoy the show. be episode 85 of badass records podcast um and i'm hanging out with swaggy roaches and blue dream the great blue dream the great and where does that come from oh gosh uh we all just kind of made our names based on scooby-doo characters <laughs> they're all based on nice. Scooby-Doo okay characters. okay I, I basically was like i'm a total nerd about it so i went and uh <laughs> like went and just wiki fan paged all the character names and was like oh that would convert well into a silly gotcha, stoner name gotcha. that would have made a whole list of them okay. was like here you go guys choose so away. so you guys are in stony doom together mm. uh and and based out of topeka yep and have been around for a couple of years i mean pretty much per se yeah we've we've uh i slash we have been working on this project for five plus years now okay for okay sure, for so i least. saw um a uh four track uh like an ep um on your band camp five if you buy the cd oh okay yeah, okay yeah. and that's a april 22 mm-hmm. and then there was a single from uh april of this year right yes um okay cool and then uh so stony doom where uh, how did you land on uh the hyphen between the two words Hmm. If you're gonna make me name drop it a bunch, <laughs> what's that? If you're, if you're gonna make me name drop it a bunch, uh, the the obvious source of uh, most of what we do is, is Scooby Doo. So oh. there's a hyphen in his, oh, his name. I'm sorry, I should have connected uh, those dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of uh, the visual theme related okay. Okay. stuff okay. of the project okay. is rooted uh, or inspired from that, and it's I just see. it's all slapstick. Okay, okay, um, but. Now, you know, the the CD that you brought, um, ever any concern with, you know, the Im- somebody being like, hey, you can't use it? No, no, because, no, not really. I mean, it's so subjective. It's it's annoying because copyright is, is, is seemingly very subjective. And yeah. it really just comes down to how much does the person that's potentially going to sue you really care about it like are you making does it look like you're making so many profits that right. they're like you know we want a piece of that pie because yeah. you know, it costs money to file a lawsuit yeah that kind of stuff so well i deal with it every week in that um so record and then edit which is just really going between you know the two cameras um and uh this and this instance a third um i'm sorry you're micless but uh and then um, lately I've been doing like a little promo, but I've always uh, like had a, an intro and an outro, just some audio, whatever yeah. I'm, happens to be on my plate at that time. And, and then since doing the promo, now I do like a little intro and an outro for the promos. So there's four clips. And I thought based on what, I don't know, that like if, if I kept it under 10 seconds, um, I could avoid copyright stuff. That was not the case. And then I hit a stride where it looked like if I kept it uh, under nine, like nine or under, then I would be. And then I, uh, this this past handful of weeks, like three out of the last four, 
have been copied. You know, I get a, I get dinged or whatever on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, annoying. nothing. Yeah. I don't understand like why uh, the audio platforms don't crawl the content the same. Not you know as hard I mean? as YouTube. Well, yeah. and I've got nothing. I mean, it's on yeah. all the places. It's on the, the website. The audio is embedded there. Yep. Um, and so, I, no strikes. Knock on wood, but it just set like the, uh, twice and two or three times now. It's like um, people in Belarus and Russia can't. It, it'll be banned there, but everybody and, right, yeah, uh, certain and, countries, yeah, that's yeah, what it always says, yeah. And then, uh, so I think what it ultimately means is if there were ever enough views to warrant it being a monetized YouTube video, then the money goes to the artist. Which is just like, really for nine nine seconds? I, I mean, you know, <laughs> you watch reaction videos. You guys ever watch those? Uh, a little bit, yeah. We, we, we had one up. done for us. Oh, yeah. really? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. The the local band smoke out. You heard of that guy? Uh uh. He's he's got a fairly pop popular uh, online following, but he's just like based in California. He just he's got a pretty cool like self podcasting setup, and he, he just does like uh, you know send in your video and get it reviewed and stuff and review your song kind of thing nice. give you his honest reaction feedback kind of thing so it was kind well of fun. they the, whether it's a movie or a song or a comedy i mean they'll play you know a bunch 10 second whatever yeah. clips all you know there's it's it's not the same content because there's video but i think all of those people are doing it through youtube I'm not sure, but you know, and I'm just making the thing and then putting it on YouTube. Yeah. So I, I don't know, but point being copyright is like, yeah, I get it. If tricky. you're like, you know, uh, malicious and belligerent and right. like, this is, I wrote this song and it's right. just somebody else's. Yeah. But if you're just, I mean, I'm, I'm featuring it cause I think it's cool and maybe somebody hasn't heard the shit before and they might then go listen to your shit mm -hmm. at, you know, it, just like this doesn't make, I actually the uh fourth episode uh this is, was a singer songwriter from Lawrence mm -hmm. and she had just she had it was very similar like the previous year uh she had put out uh, like a 10 track uh album on Bandcamp and and then just before she came she had put out a single and then she also had a, a new piece that um uh, it was nowhere yet and she sent it to me so we listened to a track from her album and we listened to the single and then we listened to the thing that was that was nowhere yet and uh when i made tiktoks of them it muted it's like you, you can't use it. i'm like it's that's it's hers what do you mean i can't use I know it, it. I know <laughs> it's just like i don't understand yeah but anyway thank you guys for being here um Stony Doom. Uh, I'm, I'm just, every time I saw like something that was like Scooby Doo, I was like, "Oh, that's cute." Never was I like, "Oh, the whole thing." <laughs> but anyway, uh, Kansas Music Project advocating for cannabis legalization through heavy riffs and bong hits, which was whoever put that line together. Thanks. Kudos to you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, Swaggy Roaches, Blue Dream, The Great. Uh, and, and let's see, guitar and bass, and then Doobie Stupid on drums, yes, right? Okay. Yes, yes, he's okay. hanging out at home in Topeka right now. Right on, so right on. He couldn't join us he, today. He had other plans? Other obligations. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so you guys are uh, a three-piece band based out of Topeka, been around four or five-ish years. The first A year or two, honestly, a active year or two. Okay. As, as a band, as a performing active, uh, especially in the public eye, a year or two top since the record came out okay. uh, almost two years ago. Now. So when you uh, run into folks that uh, were not aware of what you guys do, but they want to like keep you know informed or what do, what do you where do you guys tell them to go to be in the know for um, Sony i guess i'm out of handbills i didn't bring you a handbill but uh we we, we have handbills we pass out okay. a lot uh, as far as in-person interactions right um, whenever we go to especially like bigger sh mid mid-tier bigger shows so we'll usually i'll usually have a handful of um uh these handbills you know a little bigger than these cds uh sure 
that you know have a our, the artwork from the album on it and then just a qr code and that goes to our uh link tree okay which just has all you, of our social media stuff we were just talking i was just talking about this a couple times yesterday and then a couple weeks ago uh who who made the qr code for you or do you know uh that? i i did so i'm a graphic designer oh you are uh okay. yeah yeah that's my full-time job okay um i've been doing that since i was in early high school okay. or on my own and, and then just fell in love with that. So I, is that a thing that uh, folks that don't know anything about graphic design could Google and teach themselves? Yes, okay. yes. Obviously, me being a graphic designer doesn't have much to do with um, more than the fact that I was able to kind of clean it up and embed it and make it right. look right with theme and everything. Sure. And it was a little easier for me to, to do knowing all that stuff. But um, yeah, Google uh, uh, free qr code generator on google and, oh funny and okay you'll find it and nice. the in fact the url for that is pretty much almost that it's like qr dash code dash generator dot <laughs> com or right. something right nice it's very basic looking and almost a little spammy looking but i've never had any trouble with it it's knock on wood right, so right. it's it's got free free uh resources you can download the png version of you know the QR code for whatever link uh, you put in it. Okay, and okay. it's even got some uh, uh, some additional exclusive options, premiere options. You can probably sure. pay a little more, sure. and get your logo embedded, all that cool stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, I use the the free resources for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. QR codes are so. Good stuff. Did you um, did you grow up in the area? Uh, Topeka. Um, I grew up, born and raised in Topeka. Okay. Um, and then I've been out in Junction City, Manhattan area for about uh, almost five years now. Okay. Um, Siblings? Yeah, I have one uh, younger brother, younger a couple brother. years younger okay. than me. And then he's he's two or three years younger than me. Are, are you guys brothers? No, no. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. But no, he's around that same age right range. That's all I meant. Right on. Um, and do you have any idea how uh, mom and dad met? My mom and dad? Yeah. Um, in college on a blind date. Okay. Yep. Right on. Um, and then, uh, are they music folks? Do they put on stuff? No, no, not at all. They're no, no, no musical talent there. But um, did they play music when in the in the home? Yeah, yeah. Um, my mom was uh, pretty set in like her uh, uh, country music and sure. then some like Christian Christian rock type music. Okay. Uh, so that's that's kind of her her area, and not I'm not too big on that, but I definitely found things I liked out of that. Some of the radio rock stuff, some of the, um, she, she'd show me cool stuff, uh, like some 90s hip hop, like Salt and Pepper. She had nice. like a Salt and Pepper CD that we'd always bump. Nice. Uh, something, uh, just necessities or something like that. Uh, sure. Close to that. And um, so she had a CD collection and uh, like Lenny Kravitz, that was good, good rock okay. uh, jam. Yeah. So that we yeah. would check out together. Um, but outside of that, mostly country and, and, uh, uh, definitely a lot of Christian rock radio stuff now. But, what about uh, Dad? Dad uh, got me into a lot of the the hard rock, metal, uh, all kinds of some different rap. Um, so okay, a, a little more broader horizon stuff that I definitely definitely uh, gravitated towards a lot more. And then is uh, younger brother a music person? To- uh, he is not musically talented at all. Never has done anything musically. Um, but uh, he kind of picks up a lot after my taste, I would say. Right. Okay. I would, that's where <laughs> I was bigger. curious yep. if, if he, uh, if there was some direct influence or if he went a different direction altogether. He um, actually kind of likes a little bit of his own flavor of country, modern country oh. rock stuff now, okay. nowadays, a right. lot more so. He's been gravitating towards that and finding his own way with what he actually likes. But um, yeah, uh, uh, growing up, I'd, I'd say he definitely just kind of picked up. Sure. A lot of, of what um, he liked out of yeah. what I would play. Um, so, you know, thinking about uh, stuff that I was, my my folks were playing when I was little, you know, it's like, uh, you don't, it's just part of your, your home, your life, um, but you don't necessarily, or at least I didn't, um, I mean, I loved pretty much everything they listened to, but it wasn't mine, right? Right. And then at some point, you know, you sort of start to carve out your own path and maybe start your own collection. Was there an album that you uh, first fell in love with or first acquired or one that started your collection? Uh, my own collection? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily out of the stack. I would say one of my earliest 
would be Tool. Dad got me real big in a Tool. Okay. Um, I would listen to a lot of Tool, Tool CDs. I don't think I have any. No, I take that back. I have one of his original CDs. I, have, I think it's uh, 10,000 Days album. Okay, okay. And now I, I since have a newer copy because all of Dad's CDs got worn to shit by the time I acquired his nice. collection nice. And, and acquired his old pickup truck as my first vehicle. Okay. And, um so yeah, just just wore through all those CDs, but I did keep a couple for at least collection's sake. I don't I don't know if they play sure. for shit anymore, right. but of course I've since gone and bought my own. There you go. Copies of those, and uh, yeah, uh, so Tools um, Ten Thousand Days was one of the first ones he got me into. Uh, got a lot of hand me down CDs for my collection until late high school, right. call it College. Um, how about shows? Uh, first show that was memorable or, or first one that you attended? First uh, show I ever attended, uh, Lincoln Park in 2008. Okay, okay. Uh, where was that? At uh, the Bonner Springs Amphitheater. Okay, Not Sandstone. Far. Yeah, well, I mean, Sandstone. For us old people. Yeah. Um, right on. Um, and then uh, when did were you first playing an instrument? Or has it always been guitar? I uh, no. So I started out fourth grade with viola. Okay. Um, and uh, did that for a year, and it was cool. It was whatever. Uh, changed it up. Wanted to be in band. Did uh, percussion. Did drums. Nice. Um, they basically just had to start out with a snare drum only. And, right. Um, and and like then the single wear around the yeah, neck. Yeah. Uh, okay. No. 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 No, no neck wear. Okay. No neck wear. I didn't have to do like drum line. It's on a stand. It was on a okay. stand. And you sit. Which was, uh, some, you stand. You stand. Yeah, you, yeah, you stand. I can't even. What a standing single snare drum. <laughs> that's, that's it. But but then the, what irritated me was they made you play the uh, 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 xylophone. Oh, made you? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and yeah. then, I, of course, Can Can. That's what I remember having to play Can Can. And okay. I, I was like, I don't like this. This this instrument's dumb. I don't. I, I'm not into it. It right. just. I don't like the sound. It's not my thing. I didn't want to play it. But obviously, I wasn't gonna have to play that forever. But that just really irked me, and so I got really turned off with the whole thing, and I bailed on it the the next year. And I maybe had a year, probably less than that, off of you know figuring out what I wanted to do musically and kind of thinking about guitar a little bit. And I just remember, um, right before my 12th birthday I'd have been in 6th grade 12th or thir- yeah 12th birthday um, we were just watching uh, Home Shopping Network at home for hmm. some reason we never watched Home Shopping Network at all but uh, I just remember my parents asking me uh, like within that day or that evening you know be thinking about what you want for your birthday you know hmm. and I per usual didn't have any idea until the last minute and uh, in this crazy cool looking acoustic guitar cat Esteban I don't even remember his, if that's his first or his last name hmm. but he had this line of guitars Esteban guitars this is his own signature acoustic guitars and they were just these pretty bright different colors and they were cheap like $100 acoustic oh, guitars wow. and it was on the home shopping network and this dude had crazy long fingernails and he would just do finger picking stuff and he was a pretty good he's a really good guitar player but uh, I can't say that I've ever really seen him come up anywhere else. So he's not right. necessarily like famous or popular by any means. That he's, was he's the home shopping these, network. Yeah, he's was selling his 15 these cheap minutes. ass. Yeah, guitar. He's 15 minutes, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> poor guy. But he looked like Zorro, man. He looked like oh, uh, Legend of Zorro. You huh. know, if you know that show. Yeah. Because he had this crazy big old brimmed hat and he had his sunglasses and he was all like black, kind of caped out. Yeah. And, uh, and his fingernails, man. So so. But anyways, I saw that and I was like, that's what I want for my birthday, a guitar. And my, my dad was all hype and he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll learn guitar with you. And he never even picked it up no, ever. But you... Still to this day. But I picked it up and and uh, very little, seldom put it down sure. since. So okay. I fell off a little bit for a while, but mostly always knew that I wanted to do something musically. And sure. And I've always been kind of... Now is this uh, is Stony Doom your first band or have you been yeah. in that? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, first official for you, for original you too? band. Uh, no, I've been around the PPC for about ten years now. Oh, yeah. okay. It's way younger and way more farther advanced. Than <laughs> I am. It's funny how that works. It, it out. happens, right? And then our drummer is very, very well versed. He's been playing since he was even younger than than we started. Okay, I would say so. Um, so then, what is sort of the origin story for for Stony Doom coming together? How did you guys connect and start this whole thing? Um, 
So it's all rooted in several things. Uh, let's see. The first thing that comes to mind is I'm a perfectionist in a lot of my, my own personal art venture things. And so to overcome that, my idea with this project was, well, let's do something fun and silly um, and kind of carefree and goofy that I can get my feet wet with this whole process and just be able to build comfort and confidence in in doing it and in writing and in recording and and honestly um i say we've been around for five plus years um you know me and the project at least have been around that long because you know i spent a lot of time writing and dwelling over things and sure nitpicking and perfecting things that yeah. i end up doing anyways and finally just kind of came up with the the four original songs that we that we wanted to release okay and had some others kind of, you know, on on the shelf, but um, ultimately just decided, you know, we, we wanted to um, release it, the few of us, so we're really working the hardest on it, wanted to just go ahead and release something and just see where it went. That's sure. That's all it was about. And um, and so meddling kids, right? Mm-hmm, this yep. is what we're talking, I mean, so that was April 22, as we were talking about before we were rolling uh, contributions from 14 Eastern Kansas area stoners. Uh, plus a single called Never Say Grave Ape Again <laughs> from April of this year. Uh, where did you guys record these? In in Doobie Stupid's basement. Okay, okay. <laughs> where we practice. He, okay, nice. He's a pretty darn good sound engineer. He gets, uh, you know, for DIY stuff, he can get sure. it done. He's got all the, you know, the... Um, you know, more than the bare necessities of equipment. He's got some good sure. quality equipment for sure. And now yeah. how, I mean, self-taught I'm assuming. And him. Yeah. Yeah. His, his dad was, uh, wasn't is still, you know, very prevalent with, uh, radio, okay. uh, uh, hosting DJ type stuff. And, um, uh, fun fact, his dad owns the uh, smallest world's smallest record store in, in Bovey, uh, in Bovey, uh, Minnesota. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> um, so like he knew he had gear and new stuff before you guys were like, we should record something or did he kind of have to learn it on the fly or, uh, I'd say he engineer? had to kind of adjust for heavy metal type oh, stuff okay. for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's used to more, uh, he's got a lot of blues rock okay. uh, type roots okay. and, and, and especially it's recording is, is more based in that kind of stuff. So it was definitely uh, a, a lot of learning. Sure. And, uh, sure. We've learned a lot since then. I and, bet. And um, we're, we're already uh, writing some stuff for a new release, hopefully uh, Have you next year or something. Pinned a, uh, a date you'd like to No, hit, not or? at all. We haven't, uh, we're going to finish these last four shows that we've got okay. planned for the year. And unless anything else major comes up performance wise, we'll um, buckle down for okay. the winter and focus on finishing writing uh, what we've got going on and, and try to get uh, some recordings going. So today's uh, the 23rd. And this, I mean, it'll be next week, I think, when this is out. Um, when and where are these four shows? Uh, Coming up, finishing out the year right now, we're going to be in Manhattan, Kansas on Saturday, October 7th Okay. for uh, Rock on Prairie Fest Presents uh, One More Song. Um, it's been out in Dwight, Kansas for several years, out in the country, okay. uh, doing some camping and rocking uh, for the whole weekend out there, but they're switching up a little bit this year um, for several reasons, and it's going to be in Manhattan, Kansas uh, this year. And uh, it'll it'll be in like uh, an indoor uh, type. Um, it's not really a live music venue, but it's like an arena type type that small sure. small arena type thing for for public events that kind of thing. Um, so that'll be a two day two day thing, uh, Friday and Saturday night. I believe we're playing Saturday, um, and then the Monday a uh, couple days right after that we're playing um close to here uh mini bar. Oh yeah. Um we'll be at mini bar here in Kansas City, Missouri um with uh touring bands Temptress from uh I want to say Houston, Houston or Dallas. Okay. Um I'm going to get it wrong, maybe Dallas. Uh, they're Texas somewhere. Um right. and then Dust Lord from uh Oklahoma uh, Tulsa, I want to say. Okay. 
So um, we'll be playing with them uh, on a Monday night. And uh, then at the end of October, we are hosting um, our very own uh, live music festival in Manhattan, Kansas again. Yeah, if you haven't uh, seen anything about that, um, uh, a Stony Doom Halloween at uh, the the press. Yep. Uh, At the press in Manhattan, Kansas. It'll be an outdoor thing. We now have seven bands. Um, Cool. uh, We'll today sometime... Uh, we'll be uh, publishing those uh, additional two bands we just added. It was okay. five, so now we're up to seven. Fun. Uh, we got. Uh, uh, we just added Killer City uh, from here in Kansas City. Okay. Um, and uh, Lizard Brain Trust from Lawrence. All right. They'll be playing um, probably the the after party portion of it. Nice. But uh, other than that, we'll we'll be playing ourselves. Um, we got our good friends from Topeka and Bleed the Victim playing. Uh, there's some heavy metal boys. Uh, we got Headlight Rivals based in uh, Manhattan, Kansas, and uh, their guitar player Eric uh, Kleiner is uh, kind of the booking uh, guy and the manager of that venue. So he's okay. he's, he's who I've been working probably the closest with uh, on coordinating and planning okay. all this. So nice. And then um, I'm forgetting one. It's uh, uh, Tree Kitty. Okay. Uh, and Blood Doppers. Yeah. Tree Kitty from Hayes, Kansas. They're uh, like a psych rock kind of band. Okay. They're, they're kind of shreddy. They're kind of badass. I'm really excited to see them finally. Nice. And uh, then Blood Doppers are some couple of good friends of ours. They're from the, the Kansas City area around okay. here. If you haven't seen them, they're kind of like rocking, bluegrassy, kind of like train robbing hard rock <laughs> blues. Nice. It's a weird vibe. It's, it's cool, though. They jam. But this is your... You're oh, it's a Stony Doom Halloween. Yeah, yeah, how are you like when people buy tickets? How, where are they going to do that? How are you, what? So um, ticket link is not up yet. We're okay. still trying to coordinate it on the down low. We're hoping that we can get enough sponsorship funds to cover our cost and potentially make the event completely free. Oh man! Because nice. the whole point of the venue, uh, of the event is to um, rally support. Um, for cannabis law reform in Kansas, sure. uh, especially, and um, uh, all the proceeds um, beyond our, our production costs, all the proceeds that we raise uh, for, from the event will be uh, donated um, to a local uh, organization that's uh, that's already legitimate, established, okay. and is fighting the good fight. I don't want to name any names sure. yet. We're still establishing yeah. um, who that will be, um, okay. but uh, definitely, we're talking to some local organizations. Um, that are uh, working with legislation and, and okay. funding funding uh, lobbyists and, and people, speakers that, that go and, and fight the real, nice. f- real fight on the You guys on have a f- kind of a lot on your level. plate right now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then we'll finish out the year a few days after that, within the week after that, uh, uh, in Overland Park at uh, Vivo Live Events. We'll be playing uh, with a bunch of local uh, stoner rock type bands. Sure. Uh, we got uh, uh, Buzzard Fight. Uh, they invited us along. They're pretty cool. Um, kind of country sludge metal type stuff, nice. and uh, got Earth Cult. Um, they're cool. Um, I believe uh, Billy uh, in Earth Cult actually works at Vivo. Funny enough, so okay. that'll be good. Um, I, I like their check out their release. Uh, their debut release was really really cool. I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like hard rock, stone nice. rock sounding type stuff. Okay, and then we got. Um, Mold, I believe it's pronounced Mold. Uh, okay. They're a new band in Kansas City. Nice. So they're like sludge type stuff, I believe. Sure. Too. So. Right on, man. So uh, Apple Music page, I think I saw. Uh, Spotify, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, Honestly, any and all of it. We've, right. we've signed up so, everywhere that we can <laughs> think of to so sign up and who's try on to the, keep it updated. Who's on the hook for... All that stuff. Uh, me, okay. because okay. I mean, it's you know, it's my baby. I'm not like hogging it by any means. Um, sure, but you okay. know, it is kind of my baby, and and just out of the sake of like keeping the functionality and financing blah blah of the band simple and tidy and and just moving forward. You know, I've just taken that responsibility sure. myself, and it hasn't become too cost bearing yet. Right. It's, you know, it's pretty much you know we get back enough to keep putting back into it kind of thing yeah oh, awesome so um and then uh booking shows is that also you or uh yeah i mean i i handle all that um 
Yeah, uh, we've been very fortunate this past year. We played a lot more shows than we anticipated playing at all, and uh, uh, because we were uh, asked to play a good handful of those shows, which was awesome, and uh, uh, I think very few shows we've organized or asked to be a part of. So, nice. Yeah, we're, That's great. we're really happy, very fortunate. I mean, that. I'm sure there are uh, other outfits that have waited much longer know, yeah. that, to have uh, multiple gigs as absolutely. You know, young as absolutely and that's how it was in the very beginning when we were trying to find a venue to host uh, like an album release party uh we couldn't i didn't play for six months until our first show was until six months after the album release because nobody would book us and, like a lot of people wouldn't get back to us hmm. it was kind of recovering after covid times so sure. i'm not going to throw too much shade sure but sure sure i yeah we we were trying to pull strings and and get booking uh at several venues in the area and some people just like kind of teased it responding to us and, uh, and then wouldn't and well. so I was um, a little disheartening at first, but um, right? we got past it. And Here you are. Now uh, people finally see us a little bit. So nice, yeah. It, it definitely makes things easier once you get seen and you're finally out there. Yeah. And people are like, oh, yeah, they're they're real, I guess. Right, right. Um, so uh, when you guys, uh, so you record in Doobie Stupid's basement and, and practice there. Yeah. And then do you guys have... Uh, like a, a, t- a same time every week or whatever, like carved out, or do you have to sort of discuss and? Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it's usually pretty consistent because uh, Ryan's Ryan's got kiddos. He's got you know uh, weekends with his kiddos that are dedicated to spending time with them, kind of thing for the most sure. part. Um, so we usually just work around that. And uh, it, it, funny enough, he's had to do very little to coordinate around shows because we usually end up landing uh, shows when he doesn't have kid responsibility oh, okay. um, or okay. even work around that really yeah. easily. So um, that's very fortunate. Yeah. And, um, uh, so, but usually consistently we, we practice like every weekend, every uh, other weekend, uh, at least one, one day for cool. an hour or two. And now uh, is it, um, is everybody bringing ideas to practice and rehearsing or is it, uh, w- one person drives some of the content and some, I mean, how does that, how has that gone thus far? So I kind like, of, Oh, you said you wrote, yeah, I wrote okay, and composed like all the original stuff, sure. but again, I'm not like holding the reins on it by any okay. means. Um, it was just, you know, I had compiled all this stuff pretty much by myself and, it, it just has evolved and grown into um, what I was hoping it would be a more collaborative effort. And, uh, sure. you know, like we were talking about, it ended up being 15 of us on that right. that four, technically right. five song yeah. Yeah. Uh, CD release. So, um, yeah, go, go go buy the CD copy and you'll you'll find a bunch of bonus uh, audio content. Nice. Uh, the one I gave you, check it out. Yeah, give it a absolutely. spin. It's, um, it's got five, five tracks, not Will just four. Will you actually uh, grab it for me and just... Uh, Show, hold it up for the there we go go check it out we've uh we've kids. got physical copies available on Bandcamp. yeah 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 very nice um it's probably the easiest place to snag that um so sort of a two-parter with uh the cannabis end of things um uh, first of all like you guys all have um passion for music um and then you know passion for can like have we touched on how you guys connected in the first place uh us yeah all three of you uh so i could go many different directions um (laughs) there's a lot to say on that okay um and 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 the very if if it's not something you want to no 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 it's good it's all great stuff um and like the five six no no we've known each other seven or eight years probably Six or seven or eight years now, um, already. Crazy enough, Some, um, somewhere in, I was in living single in, digit. Yeah, I was living in Topeka about five, six years ago, um, and so we were all kind of running around the same area a little bit. It, um, you were living in Topeka still at yeah, some point. I was still living in Topeka. Yeah, he yeah he grew up in Topeka. He was still living in Topeka for a while, and um, and we we met Zach because because uh, that we met Blue Dream the Great because uh, Doobie Stupid and I uh, used to do our own. Uh, 
podcast show like this, uh, very similar to this. Oh, seriously? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Uh, uh, called Noise from Ryan's Basement. Did uh, we? We never. We didn't message about that. No, nope, we? we never okay. discussed okay. that. And uh, yeah, full disclosure, do be stupid. His name is Ryan. Okay, so go right. check out Noise from Ryan's Basement. Right. It still exists in the shadows. Sure. Um, so how long was it alive and running, and wh- about, why did it? About four or five years no at kidding. most. Um, and then we just kind of tapered off, gave up. I, you know started working in Manhattan and then I moved out there. So our schedules got really hard. And so the inspiration for that just kind of died off. And we just so, but it was the it same go. premise, like talking yeah, about people's I mean, favorite it, music, it, uh, except, um, uh, we, so we would invite them to his basement. We would like sit, they would sit in a line. I was behind the camera guy. I do like uh, a lot of video camera stuff. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I, this is honestly my first interview ever. I've, hey, I've never even been right. a host, let alone the interview. Take that we, bot online. Uh Oh yeah. Right. Kid, I'm kidding. Yeah. The other, the other interviews of us are completely fake. <laughs> don't, don't listen to them. Right. Uh, 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 well, so, that's cool. So I would do the behind the camera stuff, running the cameras and, and checking the audio stuff. He would, he would set up the audio cause he's the audio tech right. engineer guy and i would just check levels and stuff but uh we would invite you know our, our local uh band buddies uh whether it's just one of them to represent the band or the whole band and they would come and they would uh, showcase uh one or several of their songs uh in in the basement like a live music setup thing as well as we could do it yeah and it was fairly well honestly it worked plenty well enough uh, nice to pass um so I mean, like you know, mics yep. on instruments and as, the, as much as we had available f- and at, we could. But and ultimately, had at and the and end, like you're, you're, you guys were like, "This sounds yeah, pretty sounds good. good." Yeah, for right. sure. And I mean, like, we fuck worked, it, that's we all together. To you know, I would, I would edit the video and put, put the nice audio on the the good looking DSLR camera video, and and so I, we actually learned a lot. Uh, you know, I think. Uh, video and audio techniques each of cool. us and just just networking techniques and stuff sure. from that venture but um right, four or five years that's amazing yeah I mean, I'd, at most and and it was like a once every month or two kind okay. of thing we, okay. we maybe made 20 or less episodes okay. ever but it was a ton of fun and we met so many good friends through that anyways yeah, like <laughs> i said this is gonna go so many different directions with I mean, how we met just you're how the, we you met. guys are the ones with time commitments after this <laughs> not at all not i mean all. i'm yeah. i'm cool with you're gonna have to trim a lot of fat <laughs> yeah i i really don't <laughs> that's, you know that's cool. if if we uh, oftentimes i have a pea-sized bladder so i gotta pee a lot yeah so yeah. bathroom breaks, breaks what breaks, if totally. something happens yep. uh, the dog need uh i cut that out and i we, usually, i'll yeah. cut out the beginning chit chat before yeah uh but other Find than the sweet spot it's other than that i really enjoy uh letting it be for sure you know yeah, and it's not that. always like I've, I've learned that now there's uh ai that will cut from camera to camera for you oh, wow. based on your talking and so yep. I don't want it to just be on you when like you know uh, as much as I don't like seeing myself you know scratch my nose and do do all the other weird things that are uh, I, I do want to mix it up and have it feel not just duh, 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 yeah. you know what I mean yeah so uh anyway uh that's cool though um but anyways, yeah. What and and oh, uh, fun, funny fun fact. Uh, we would we would say edit that out a lot. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what that reminded me. Of. Yeah, yeah, edit yeah. That out. We uh-huh. would, sure. We had, yeah. We had a, a couple of really bad interviews where uh, you know we were really lax. We we would all drink and stuff. And, sure. And uh, and sometimes get a little carried away with the, the people we were closer with. And, yeah. And by the time you get all the music played out and all the sweat out and all the booze in. And you get to the interview part. We did that a little backwards sometimes, and people were a little, I mean, a little intoxicated. There was, there was a lot of edit that out. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Requested by the band. Otherwise, Dude, I thought you got to promise you're going to edit that out, yeah, man. Right, right. So, anyways, he was one of the guests on that show. That okay. Is, that is Very how we cool. all really met and became and you close and comfortable. Found it because. Oh man, I think I met Doobie Stupid uh, Ryan on Facebook. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Music networking yeah, online, yeah. yeah. Good old Facebook. Zach was Zach was still in high school. High school yeah, musical prodigy. Nice. Still in high school, writing his own music, releasing his own music. Oh, cool. Well before I was. Very sure. cool. So he was already doing it. Like like he had mentioned earlier, he was already already well in into it and uh, doing his own band stuff. And so you got these things happening, and then somewhere out of that, the 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 hey, let's let's do a band 
Kind of, yeah. Kind of comes so, up. Now, how about the, I mean, I'm assuming that everybody shares in the passion for cannabis uh, reform equally. Is that yeah, safe to I would, say? I would, I would say so. And okay. I mean, not, not uh, comparing dick sizes or anything, but, <laughs> uh, but I mean, obviously, you know, like I, like I said, Doobie Stupid's got a family he's got to consider and, and stuff. A, and so. a huge hog on him, right? A huge hog, <laughs> obviously. Don't let the fact that he's a little quiet on the cannabis advocacy right. in public right. deceive you at all, huge hog. Yeah. Obviously, he's got... But, I mean, at some point, like, uh, uh, I would assume but that... So, obviously, we, 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 you know, to each his own on how much we're, like, very public about it. And okay. And I'm not, like, super public about it. That's kind of like oh. part of the reason we all came up with these, or I pushed these personas on all of us. Okay. These, uh, these um, well, pseudonyms. Thank you, because that's the second part is, like, uh, at some point... Uh, you, you know, you can sort of walk the line a little bit, but at some point you step over and say, no, I'm, uh, I, I don't care what friends, family, employer, it's people, you mm -hmm. know, uh, if they're going to judge me for this or, or, or disagree with my passion for it. Like, I mean, it's, it's sort of out there, right? I mean, yeah, so and I'll be completely honest. It's not as radical as it sounds though. I think we just happen to be in a very fortunate, uh, time frame in our lives where, uh, our, our families, at least that we keep in contact with, um, are aware of our lifestyles and sure. whether they support it or not, you know, they, they at least kind of leave us alone about it if you will okay let, okay let us do our own thing now um, my curiosity comes from uh two uh parents that like it you know what i'm almost 50 so when i was when you're in uh, whatever health class or whatever uh and the, and you get to uh drugs and dare and blah it's all and i know this is a long time ago but it's all the same like Cocaine is LSD is marijuana, blah, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and then maybe you get a, a, a tiny uh, backpedaling on that and, oh, it's the gateway, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I would bet uh, everything that my mom has never smoked um, and still like she, well, she's dealing with uh, her own, uh, you know, um, She's health wise, she's not as lucid and, and clear as she used to be. Um, so she probably has zero awareness of what we've seen transpire in the last 10, 15, sure. 20 years. But I, but uh, so she probably still thinks the same way she used to think. My dad, he's been he's he passed away like 22, 20, 21 years ago. Uh, and he told me one time, um, he, he was he liked his cans of Budweiser he was a, he was a big was big my grandpa um and he told me one time at a party in high school or college that he he had a couple of hits and then couldn't uh open the refrigerator door to get it so he and he felt weird so he left and he sure. was like never again you know yeah. so I to their to his grave and probably to hers they <gasps> would you know right you know he can't, I can't have my friends know that he's, oh, but yeah. that's me I you know you guys have are younger and probably different experiences you know kind of i mean my parents were the exact same way growing up and i really had to honestly fight fight through that uh, um it's it's been just, a rift yeah you know, this was not anymore but rebellious teen knucklehead and was like i'm gonna do my own thing one way or another and um eventually you know they kind of came around through my <laughs> persistence, but also just, I think through societal changes and also their friends started coming around and, um, you know, some of their friends are veterans. Some of their friends have their own chronic pain, medical needs. So it's, it's just like, you know, it, it, when you're actually around it and it is a reality, you hear about the realities of it. You're like, it's not all that dark, oversaturated crap we heard growing up, right. blowing it out of proportion, right. lumping it in with, cocaine and, right. and meth and heroin um so no they, they've come around a lot in the last five to ten years at least yeah for me personally it's made it a lot easier and i've i've since before i even started working i've always made my own personal bag I'm, I'm like i don't care what employers think or say you know i'm, I'm not gonna show up and and be out of control stoned or anything and 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 jeopardize uh, the quality of my job or 
or anyone else's uh, work safety or uh, well-being. But um, you know, at the same time, I I always kind of made my own personal back. You know, if they want to drug test me and they want to base uh, my employment status off of that, then I'll just go elsewhere or, sure. or whatever. Sure. I, I personally don't care, so I will be rebellious or stubborn in that fact, at least personally. But um, Now, um, I would assume, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, if you are a, a person or, or a group of people that have a passion for the reform of laws, like how much about the law do you know or did you feel compelled to learn and was that is that part of it super boring or that's a good question that's a good question so uh, we we try to you know keep it real with what we know and and what and uh being candid about a lot of this being you know our opinions a lot of this being you know what what we think and see and experience so it's all, you know, like we were saying to each his own, it's all everyone, everyone has a little different experience with, sure, especially with a substance like this, in my opinion. Um, so well, we can only really speak from our own experiences, but, um, as far as, uh, laws and knowledge about laws, um, it, it can be a little boring. Yeah. It can be a little daunting for I, sure. I um, just, I can't, yeah, it's, I love, uh, books. I, right. I wish I read more than I do. Yeah, yeah, um, but I'm telling you if I am not it put a put text in front of me yep. and if it's not interesting, I, in I'm minutes. two lines yep. and I'm, my mind goes somewhere else. Yeah, I know. So if it's like legally, whatever, or, 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 a, you know, a study from a psychological journal or, or what I majored in psych and it's yeah. just like, the pay, the way that they made you write papers was like fucking stab me in the face. This is who would read this? Yeah, I'm, who not, would re- I'm not much of a reader. I'm not much of a lengthy <laughs> so, writer. Well, it, so but to that effect, uh, we we play to our strengths, and we like I said, we keep it real about what we can do and what we know, and so we we kind of think of ourselves as like the 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 pep rally band. Okay, for, for cannabis law sure. reform, we want to just. Turn on, turn, turn on that light in your head that goes, oh, you know, I should care mo- even more about this than I do already. I should, you know, find find out what I can do to get involved. And and sure. again, that's like we talked about. That's daunting to to label yourself about that publicly, to get involved and to make a stance and to put your name behind mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It is still extremely controversial. I completely understand that. Well, uh, I, you know, you guys probably know more about this than I do, but I feel like, uh, first of all, what a weird little part of the country, uh, for anybody that is cannabis friendly or not, you know, to just, it's, I mean, I, I feel like it's not that long ago that we all thought that both Kansas and Missouri would never bend sure. and, and and then all of a sudden Missouri is like, okay, medicinal. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know what? Recreational. It's like, yeah, why? Just, which leaves Kansas like so shocked. Where, where'd you guys go? Like, yeah. I thought you were right here, you know, <laughs> but I mean, there, that, that there are plenty of other issues, uh, in the conservative realm of things that get stamped on Kansas. Right. So, so it fits, but it's also, you know, you kind of, I th- no matter who you are, I think at some point you got to say to yourself, take a look around, like exactly. see what the rest of the country, exactly. I don't know. I don't, I'm not all the other political, social issues aside, just talking about, yeah, cannabis, cannabis law reform, cannabis legality, prohibition, all that crap. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just shocking. Like you said, take a look around. Uh, it's, it's so disheartening. I mean, I don't even know like how many states do have medicinal now. I mean, uh, double digits by far, right? Medicinal, I think it's all but like two, seven or eight. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I think okay. it's all but seven or eight that have some form of. Uh, Blue Dream the Great's going to fact check me on that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take anything need to, I uh, say for since, fact. <laughs> well, we also, uh, especially me, uh, need to repeat things that he is saying because yes, the mics aren't of probably yep, picking yep, them up. I, I figured as much. Um, but, and then, I mean, you know, okay, so a good number for I would say it's all but seven or eight have some and, form of medical, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of uh marijuana i call it cannabis cannabis uh legalization medical or medical i keep medical saying medicinal or, uh, 
uh, yeah, I think technically it's called medical. Med- uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And then recreational. Oh, uh, and then recreational. It's I say and or, but it's usually like the. I think it's always been the case that they'll do medical program first for see how it goes several years, yeah. which is fine. That makes sense. Yeah, That's fine. yeah. And and then um, it's it seems like the more states that have come around to implementing a medical program have quicker and quicker. Uh, turned the leaf and went full recreational nice because yeah. good lord what was missouri like three maybe four years of medical it was a minute it was a minute yeah it wasn't too terribly long though no. no no it wasn't and it and wasn't like colorado which no. was uh gosh i can't even remember how long ago they they started with uh medical early 2000s probably or m- m- middle 2000s yeah, middle at, 2000s. at latest yeah um but but, but then there was about a five ten year span, I think, before they went full uh, recreational. Yeah, well, they had. I mean, they were sort of guinea pigs and had to <laughs> figure stuff. Like, is did they? I mean, I'm assuming they figured. They definitely figured I, out the I bank like, piece. I feel like they're probably still figuring out a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah especially yeah. being the the federal the bar on federal uh, legalization. So yeah, yeah, huge disconnect. Because like, like, I mean, you used to hear uh, that you couldn't use a card because it's attached to the bank and the bank is federally blah. So it was like cash only. And then, right. and then you start hearing now stories of like armored cars card, right. and security guards being multi times. So if I'm not mistaken, they still can't like bank in federal banks or something. So I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, the, you can pay with a debit card. You can card. pay with a debit card. True. But I don't know that they can store uh, or bank th- their money, their funds. Uh, I don't know. Or they they probably so what have do you do? bullshit limitations yeah. and loopholes yeah. to deal with. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Well, um, so if I may, I mean, uh, you know, there. Uh, this is, you know, cannabis um, has sort of led the way or or been pushed to the front, but but now there's there's. Um, uh, you know, there's there's some people that are vocally supportive of uh, MDMA, MDMA use, and then ketamine. Uh, you can have you can order ketamine online and have it sent to your house, wow. and uh, you're supposed to consume it with a licensed therapist that has sure. done it. Um, and kind of same with like MDMA and, uh, and mushrooms. Yes, and then you stuff. mushrooms. A lot of lot of talk about microdosing yeah. and health benefits. Um, I I felt like there was um, you know some some thoughts about microdosing LSD, but that feels like maybe it's quieted or maybe mushrooms have just. So anyway, uh, do you have? thoughts or opinions on those kinds of things or is cannabis just by itself and that's been our focus i mean we're definitely personally yeah we're definitely interested in in all that that stuff right personally i say legalize in prohibition of all drugs okay personally okay and let people find their way because you know the the human condition is is a curious one yes and always will be and so i i think the better approach would would be you know on on the post end of someone's experience and use um you know making sure that their mental health is good right and uh and that they're they're doing it for a progressive and sure. self-beneficial reason you sure know? not not self-destructive you know because drugs can be self-destructive too of course um, so um just yeah using it for the right reasons and and providing help and providing resources for people to wean off when they want to when they're ready to that right kind of, kind of thing right because addiction can be real with a lot of these substances too so yeah so finding a way to um use that middle lane that that sweet spot yeah you know, pe- i think people should be able to experiment and experience uh pretty what a, much any any drug that they want if per- you personally. if you were uh presented the opportunity uh would you do ayahuasca um, I'd like to know more about it. Um, I, I am definitely curious about that kind of stuff. What about you? Uh, I mean, yeah, I've, I've done plenty of psychedelics. I'm, I'm not afraid to talk about it. I have not done ayahuasca okay. or DMT. Uh, definitely open to trying it. I'm a little bit more wary of DMT now than I'm going to say the same. Yeah, DMT, I'm a little more curious or aware of. Yeah. I think okay. that would be like the, what I consider the hardest or the, the wildest thing yeah. that, that right. I would be right. actually curious about trying yeah. at some point not necessarily 
searching for any of these things, but you know, in the right setting, the right timeline and stuff, sure. circumstances, I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm very pulled, uh, tempted to, uh, y- you know, walk a little further down the ayahuasca path. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also super terrified. Oh, definitely. That. Um, yeah, like, definitely that. <laughs> you know, I'm a champion vomiter. Like I can, <laughs> yeah. I can hang, but I don't know that you I can rally. I've never like been like, you know what I want to do today is puke a bunch. For sure. I'm going to go to where that can happen. That's the one that, yeah, that's the one that makes you do that a lot. Pretty it, much. Yeah. I think, much. I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's either that one or peyote. I can no, honestly I'm, get those ones confused. People I know go to a little about either. Of them. They go to the, uh, multi, you can do multiple nights where it's like one night you have a cup and the next night you have two or three and mm-hmm. you know, and some people like the stuff happens coming out the other end. Yeah. Um, Man. which obviously, you know, I, I can see myself in either of those situations and, and, you know, getting through it and coming out. But, uh, it's also terrifying just in the sense of, uh, whatever it is that's ha- it's like this, purification or you know healing of wound like that part is scared like i want i want the end result but i don't want to yeah, walk through the, the battlefield right? you know and i guess the point of all of that is that i'm just a big pussy but um but it's <laughs> but it's fat but that's real that's you know that's so human of, of yeah. you and us to to be intimidated or a little scared of that but god it, it i think it's really rewarding you know when you make it through and I just think it's super eye-opening. Uh, I think I think drugs are cool, man. <laughs> I really do. That's all I can say. Drug? What's his name? What's the school counselor's name? From drugs are bad. Dr- okay. mm, drugs are good. Okay. Well, I was. We were on uh, Instagram Live the other day, and I don't remember how we got Mr. Mackey. But I, yeah, Mr. Mackey. I was doing Mr. Mackey voice for like several minutes. I was like, drugs are actually pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> I still. I caught the. I don't know how. Uh, Oh, I was, I think, uh, you know, I was definitely, I've seen some shows over Labor Day weekend and uh, a lot of uh, lounge time in the hotel room. Uh, and at some point South Park was on and it was the episode where somebody poops in the urinal. <laughs> He's just, have you guys seen that one? Oh my God. He gets on the the intercom like multiple times a day across like a whole week. And says he every time he do, says it, he has a different way of saying it. But he'll be like, <laughs> "Just because one of you boys, okay, took your pants down and laid a mud monkey right there in the urinal," and like the whole school laughs every time he, but he does it like twenty <laughs> times across the episode. It's like the most he ever has spoken. Um, but anyway, uh, I appreciate um, you uh, you guys being candid about that, and um, uh, hopefully there's not a cut that out uh, portion of that. Nah, totally not. Look, just just yeah, being the right m- mindset. That's if we had any advice to give. I'm sure. Just, oh, know, of course. Well, you touched on be me- careful mental and health and yeah, you find, know finding the sweet spot and learn learn what you can about stuff before you take it. Don't right. Just, don't just do it mindlessly. But, right. Uh, and be with someone who probably you know if you can be with someone who already has experience. Yeah. With it. That's the best yeah. thing you could do. I've I've had uh I will say personally I've had mostly really good mushroom trips but I've had one very bad mushroom okay, trip. Okay, okay. That's all I'll say about that. Interesting. Sure, sure. So yeah, just be careful, be mindful and and maybe have someone look out for you, yeah. and, you know. Yeah. I just good. every so single time I've I've met somebody and uh who like once or twice, you know, and it was just god awful terrible. Yeah. The uh, the follow up the answers to my follow up questions are a st- I'm like, well, what'd you do? Well, we went out. I'm like, in public with like other people. <laughs> oh man! It, it, like, n- n- dude, you know, a buddy's house where everybody's on the same wavelength or camping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, outside in nature, like yeah. you can't go to like businesses and you just have inter- to overwhelm yourself or overstimulate. Yeah, yourself. yeah, exactly. You're gonna have a bad time. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I really appreciated, uh, our correspondence in, in, in getting this, uh, set up and, uh, thank you for, uh, sending me a list of records. Um, I usually like to just roll through them in order of release. Um, yes, I was going to ask what your preference. Okay. Now I usually, I print off, uh, album cover and then write track listing but you i think you brought every one i one up to you okay you, i have them all on cd which is awesome this and is I have great a bonus i have 
an unopened 20th, I believe it's yeah the 20th anniversary of White Pony. Okay, if all right. If you haven't seen about that, they did like a bunch of remixes. Yeah, I saw it digitally. Uh, it's like all the original stuff, but then the second CDs, um, yeah, it's it's all like DJ house, sure, dub step yeah. almost kind of yeah. electronic stuff. So it's. But I, I never opened it because I heard it on Spotify, and I was like, "Yeah, that's cool." But I guess I'll just leave it unopened because nice. it feels even cooler. <laughs> so, but we'll start in 1992 with uh, "Dirt," Allison Change with Allison Chains, which is uh, the second of six for them. Thirteen tracks, 57 minutes. Um, I can't really explain this, but I I thought for a while uh, that "Facelift" just had to be their best record and um, it's not right. I mean, this dirt is like a really, really, really incredible record. Um, it took, you know, I've listened to it a bunch, you know, probably straight through when it came out and, and bits and pieces ever since, Yeah. but I, I haven't sat down and, and run through the whole thing and, until getting ready for this. I'm like, really? God damn dude. This thing is chock full of just absolute bangers. Um, so, uh, and I can't talk about Alice in Chains without saying if you've never watched the uh, Nutshell uh, from the Unplugged, um, that you it's a, you must. It's an absolute must. It's the wildest thing, and there's a ton of reaction videos to it too. Have you have you watched? <laughs> I haven't it? seen any reaction videos, but I, I'm oh. sure I know what you're talking about. I've so I've watched that unplugged in its like entirety, more or less. But I I can't say. So so nutshell is nutshell. the lead off track, and they all uh well I think it's when it starts Jerry's out there, and then they all kind of come one by one. Lane stumbles out, and Lane yeah. is last, and he's it's very dark and a ton of candles. It's very cool. Yeah, uh, he's got his hair is short and it's pink and he's got shades on yeah. and he is not well. Yeah, he's and, and, and nutshell, uh, is if I, if I'm correct, um, a song that Jerry wrote about Lane's addiction and, and this is, and they, to get him to be present, yeah, they, they I don't know what exactly, but like, uh, take, he had to take some drugs to, you know, tamper the uh, right. uh, effects of, of not, you know, coming off of heroin mm -hmm. whenever, however recently it was. Um, and then, I mean, the, I, I'm a big, uh, uh, fan of sap and jar of flies, those yeah. two EPs yeah. and one in nutshell comes from one of those, but the dude is playing, uh, an acoustic bass and it's got written on it. Uh, friends don't let friends get haircuts um and just i mean lane it anyway uh, that's not the record we're here to talk about but it's no, but that is an incredible performance um Very powerful. i recently discovered uh city and color uh mopop founders award 2020 a guy named dallas green um does an uh, uh acoustic cover of uh rain when i die okay holy shit it is so incredible. I mean, it's it's not meant to sound, mm -hmm. but it, it's a really really cool setup. He's in this fairly big sized room with a you know a, a typical band guy's rug. He's got a rug rolled out and his gear, and he's got an amazing voice. But um, I think that for. Uh, I'm probably not alone in this, but I think that um, you can hear uh, one or more Alice in Chains songs a bunch of times and never really uh, know exactly what's happening lyrically across the board. Um, I was not aware, uh, or it never occurred to me uh, what that song, Rain When I Die, uh, was about. And really, I mean, like, you guys have an outdoor thing to go to today and the weather's sort of flirting with, but how shitty if it rains when you'd fucking die <laughs> and everybody's got to go stand in the rain and right. just not want to be there because right. they're getting rained on when they're supposed to be like paying their respect. Anyway. Um, so last thing I'll say, and then I would like to hear you talk about this record. Um, I recently, cause I kind of checked out after this one. Uh -huh. Um, and I was not even really fully aware that they are still kind of active. Really? So 
Uh, I mean, I knew they did some, but it's like I think I think they came through town recently. And I was yeah, like, what? Yeah. So um, it, they, uh, fuck, they're in town tonight. No, they're opening for Guns N' Roses tonight that's, at okay. Kaufman. That's what it is. That's so funny. At Kauf, damn. Okay. Yeah. It's so so funny. so I I saw this and I sa- I don't remember who or where, but I said, oh, oh shit, man, for real. And whoever I said it to was like, yeah, man. And I was like, how? Hey, shit, I've seen him like three times okay, with so, their new senior. I never got to see Lane, obviously. I'm too young. But So this person says to me, because I'm like, how do you, uh, kind of going back to you know that feeling about Nutshell and, mm-hmm. and the, those first two records and those two EPs, like how do you, like if Lane, there's no replacing him. It's that's the end of that band. So the person that I said this to says to me, "Oh well, luckily Jerry and William Duvall both sound and sing just like Lane, so they never really missed a beat." And I was like, "What?" So then I pulled up the most recent, and I kind of just scanned a few tracks, and I'm like, and I was like, "There's some similarity, sure. but it's not the fucking sing- like." What? Not the same, but it was a good step in. Yeah. Anyway, how did this one land in your lap, and and what makes it uh, earn a spot on your list? So, you know, I've 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 heard uh, several of these songs uh, growing up. Obviously, the Bones is, is huge. Uh, Rooster's huge. Um, so I, I had heard those on the radio. Dad would play them a little bit. Um, he, he never had any CDs of Alice in Chains or anything. Mm. And honestly, I never um, fully appreciated uh, Alice in Chains until uh, probably around college, late, okay. late high school at least, but definitely in college. Um, uh, it's, it's a couple of these other bands, these heavier, um, heavy bands, Deftones, definitely Mastodon, I would say, were uh, um, a result of... Uh, uh, me meeting uh, someone that I used to work with in Topeka in a screen printing uh, uh, shop, uh, Justin Payne. Shout out Justin Payne. He showed me. Uh, he was our screen printing shop manager, production lead manager. Okay. And, uh, so he showed me. It got me turned on to a lot of heavy stuff. And he's real big in Alice in Chains. And so we would kind of you know go back and forth over that stuff. Uh, you know, talking about the stuff that we already liked and, and he would show me a lot of new stuff I like. And so this was just one of those things that we revisited and, uh, or for me revisited. And I just, you know, fell in love with it from then on. I was like, well, I've, I've heard most of this stuff before, but it just kind of really clicked then. Funny enough, the first time I ever got stoned, uh, rock fest 2010, um, uh, was the first time I ever smoked weed. And, um, Alice in Chains, uh, I might get this wrong. I want to say was, were they the headlining band that, that year? No, I think it was Godsmack maybe. They were either the headlining band that year or a couple of years after. But but it was around that time, you know, I was kind of loosely listening to them. So so it, within, it was either 2010, 11, or 12 that Alice in Chains uh, headlined or second headlined. I want to say they headlined. But, uh, of course, I was incredibly stoned, so I very <laughs> loosely remember it. Right. Um, not... <coughs> Not that it impends my memory that much, but right. especially in the early stoner days, you know, you're getting adjusted and acquainted with a, a totally different uh, experience yeah. in life. So all I will say is that I had a very hazy experience yeah. seeing Alice in Chains the first time um, there's a that tune, I ever saw them. Funny, there's a with tune on called, there called Godsmack. Called Godsmack, yeah. But it's two words and, st- and the nah, band yeah, is one, and, right? And when I'm saying it out loud, I think Godsmack was the headlining band in 2010, and I think Alice in Chains was probably 11 or 12. Okay. Um, but again, within the first couple of years of, of me being a little pothead. So, sure. So uh, I, I do remember seeing them at uh, Rockfest uh, with Willing Duvall and w- w- appreciated it. I was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, well, classic rock, man. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, a few years later, I meet, you know, our, our production lead who, who reintroduced me into okay. this. And then I fell in love with it. Um, and it was like, wow, I wish I would have appreciated that even more when I saw them then. But, you know, I've seen them since now. Right. I, I just saw them in the last summer or two okay. when they came through. Good uh, show. At Sandstone again. Great show. Nice. Yep. Was was a lot more, uh, I was just a stone, but <laughs> I remember a lot better. <laughs> uh, you were be honest. I more accustomed to. Yeah, I was yeah, with a couple yeah, buddies yeah. That, were, that are just chain smokers. Man. With that shit, so I Man. couldn't even keep Right, up. right. <laughs> uh, I saw them at Sandstone as uh, part of the facelift tour with van halen they opened for van halen it was, oh, it was fun it was fun it was a great show i was like these guys these guys are and and you know uh um 
what the hell is the the track off of facelift that was that really uh sprung them um man in the box yeah yeah um never in my life uh, you know that wow 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 and then the wow yeah like what mm-hmm. holy shit man uh but this thing That's how i feel about so much off of so much so much of the noise and the sounds so off much of angry album. chair there's just a lot hidden away yes in, in some of the the transitions and and that that weird fucking untitled interlude yeah that yeah it's just yeah. complete nonsense uh-huh. for a very short period of time and yeah and, and, and wood uh you know maybe even I feel like Wood was on the Wood, singles. Wood is the uh, yeah, soundtrack. A very popular song too. Yeah. Somehow I I still think it's underrated personally. Wood is the one that um, when we were rediscovering when I was rediscovering this album that I think was the one that really resonated with me. And sure. It's, it's well, it's still killer. now absolutely. My, Wood is my all time favorite Alice in Chains song. Well, so you're you you thumbs up. William Duvall and, and yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, they're I, doing the right I, thing I by he's continuing. A, a great step in. I'm very happy that that he did. And you know, since reconnecting with with this band and this music and appreciating it way more in the last five or so plus years, um, um, yeah, I, I love love the sounds that this band puts out. And I have since learned how much uh, this band was was really from Jerry, you know, Jerry Cantrell and his oh. his writing and his singing. He's, you know, everyone thinks of Lane and, uh, and he deserves no, Jerry's, credit, but yeah. Jerry is the brains of this band. He he's, is. He's kind absolutely. of quiet in, per, in person, I feel like, you know. Um, um, so he's kind of that almost almost behind the scenes guy somehow, even though he's right up front stage singing well, his head I, off. But I'll tell you, uh, to go back to that. Everyone just thinks Lane. And no, but I mean, he, he was, uh, you know, uh, but what like I've a Jim Morrison. Jerry was the brains and yeah. that that is especially why Allison Chains uh, successfully does and deserves to continue on. Right on. Well, uh, to go back to that unplugged nutshell perform, and it's it's so cool because it's the, it's the first song of the night, so you get like band and venue name and somebody's handwriting like right there on the screen. Um, but so this... I've never heard anything like the acoustic bass that's being, and, and of course Lane's voice is beautiful, but the, this runtime of that version is like under four minutes or right. It's very short mm. and it ends with the most beautiful acoustic guitar solo I think I've ever heard. And it's like a seven second solo. I mean, he just kind of runs up the neck and then the song ends mm-hmm. and it's god it's so amazing I, jerry deserves a hell of a player yeah have you ever heard much of his solo stuff no uh uh-uh. Ch- yeah check out like boggy depot i think he put out in like the 90s or early 2000s okay um boggy depot is really really fucking good like nice. every song off of that's incredible it and you'll be like oh yep he's the brains of right, Chains, right, all right, right. well uh so from 92 to 2000 uh white pony uh deftones uh, so bef- I'm getting ahead of myself. The other, how many did I say? Uh, so six total uh, Alice in Chains records, Dirt and Facelift. Uh, the other four, are you familiar? And are they? Yeah, I, I love their whole discography, okay. honestly. Okay. Um, you know, I could, you know, pick a few out here or there that I don't, I don't care for song-wise. But, you know, sure. uh, all, all for of the their most albums, part. every single one of their albums, cool. I would overall thumbs up well white pony is three of nine for deftones 11 tracks 49 minutes the second time this has made somebody's list nice uh we've got to go all the way back to episode 22 though uh deftones come into your life how Shit, shout them out shout them out real quick who am i relating to from that episode oh uh are you familiar with the restaurant uh plate plate no but there's, that's a great name there's one right down the street if you were to go to starlight you would drive past it and then there's huh. another one in leewood the owner of those restaurants is a guy by the name of christian joseph um and he had uh th- three four al- and anyway white pony it was funny because i had never listened to them uh, at all at all wow. and, and just assumed uh again going back to Lang- written language. I was like, I bet these guys are kind of like Daft Punk because you got the D F T, and then I was like, Oh shit! <laughs> oh my! Nope! <laughs> oh my! Wake up! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, I I was uh, waiting for my uh, daughter to get home from 
uh, thing last night and I was watching a compilation of uh, Family Guy Greatest Hit or whatever. Um, and <laughs> this the, one of the all the camera starts and it's like on one of the uh, uh, Daft Punk dudes in the suit with the helmet yeah. and he walks up to the other one and he was like, check out what this button does on this Casio. And he pushes it and just plays like a little Daft Punky sounding kind of thing. <laughs> and somebody comes in from the, uh, behind the curtain and hands him a Grammy, <laughs> a Grammy trophy. And then the other Daft Punk guy goes, I didn't even know we were French until you started speaking. <laughs> Anyway, we're not talking about uh, uh, Daft Punk. We're talking about Deftones. So you completely different, apparently. Disco- yeah, yeah. You discover them how? Um, uh, kind of similar. Again, heard a lot of radio hits. I guess. I mean, mm. they're not like a real, real big radio mm-hmm. band, but a cha- change. You know, in the House of Flies is like the one of their most popular probably their most popular song of all time i, okay. I would bet as uh, you know streaming wise plays uh sales whatever it's gotta it's gotta be their top song um fully assuming that don't take anything i say for right. fact right. <laughs> right but uh so i had heard that one and it's cool it's you know so dissonant and, and weird and it's got a you know just so much progression and melodic change and that's just how i would describe like all of their music really um but Hmm. Where I honestly can't establish. I you know I knew you would ask me that stuff. And, <laughs> and with this one, I can't necessarily establish a specific point where That's where cool. they came into my life sure. where I was introduced or anything. I was aware of them, and then you know uh, definitely again around college time when I started working with JP and getting into heavier metal. Um, you know, kind of because of some of the stuff he was introducing me to was just kind of opening doors to. He didn't necessarily introduce me to all this stuff. In fact, I don't think he fucking, I don't think he likes Deftones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am actually so backtrack. Just uh, get off track yeah, a quick second. Yeah. Uh, starting out uh, up up till college, I was always more inclined to like uh, w- what I liked, what I what what I wanted to listen to, but within what my friends liked and wanted to listen to. So I was really limiting myself early on. Um, and I, I didn't like that and I don't want to do that, but you know, most through high school, you know, uh, if, if I found something I liked that my friends also liked and, and clung onto, then, you know, I would usually stick to that so we could all share yeah. similar tastes and stuff. Yeah. But once I got out of high school into college and stuff, definitely when I met JP, was when I started finding some new bands and realizing how much I enjoyed that um, new music discovery and just opening those doors. Like, you know, I had kind of desired all along just wanting to find music that I like and finally just kind of uh, rip the bandaid off moment where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on what I actually like. And so that's why I say uh, I, I always get a lot of flack and jokes because a lot of my friend group now don't give a shit about Deftones and are even kind of annoyed by Deftones. Mm. But I'm a Deftones fanboy. Absolutely sure. love all of Deftones through uh, and through. Okay, again, whole discography gets um, a... Oh, big thumbs up. Nice. I think uh, Deftones and Mastodon have never done any wrong. Well, okay, Mastodon actually, uh, Sultan's Curse sucks. I'm sorry, guys. But... Um, other than that, they've done no wrong. Deftones, flawless discography. Okay, okay. Doubt. They're one of the very few bands, I would say, has a perfect discography, even though Steven, Stefan, Stefan Carpenter, whatever the guitar player's name is, is a dumbass mm. um, flat earther. So uh, I just saw that the other day, and he was like, I could show, I could point, he's, he's got a bunch idiot. of examples. What an idiot, man. I've been on so many planes. Ah, oh, that frustrates like, the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> I was I just sent a joke about that to somebody last night. Nice. You know? Nice. So I I will throw him under the bus for that. Well, I mean, uh, cool guitar player, hell of a band, flawless songwriting, Chino Marino, one of my all-time ooh, favorite yes, vocalists. Yes, yeah. Oh my god, just incredible vocal style and and creativity and just vocal abilities. Mm. Just mind blowing, and and I was fortunate to see him per, them uh, perform once. So far, I went I, I went all the way uh, about a five five and a half hour drive to Maryland Heights to see them at the okay. Hollywood sure. uh, Amphitheater. Yeah, 
Um, and uh, I was in the early stages of not knowing, but um, dealing with having a hernia, a really bad hernia. Oh, boy. And so I uh, rode in the back seat of the car the whole way there. I uh, couldn't even drive. I had my friends drive, but I wasn't missing the fucking show. And, <laughs> and You couldn't drive because you were in too much pain yeah it, i preferred not to i mean it wasn't that i couldn't drive it was uh somebody else was there so it, they might the as well drive was, was it like poking out no it okay. wasn't poking out okay. no it was it ended up being like a kind of a shredded sports hernia it wasn't like classic it wasn't like protruding yeah. single puncture or anything. okay yeah did so. it have to get treated eventually? so it, it did eventually I, I spent almost three and a half years with it before they finally discovered it long story short yeah wow a bunch of a dumbassery with with medical professionals not properly assessing it oh and, man and dismissing it and oh man so i went down the rabbit hole of of all the wrong kinds of doctors not not assessing the right kinds of things but anyways that is my story from having the hernia <laughs> is i got i got to see deftones i wasn't Heck gonna miss yeah. them we drove a long ass ways to see them. And Hopefully, was, it was a comfortable I was in vaccine pain the whole time. Oh god, and it was not very comfortable. That but sucks. but I did it, and I was screaming my head off the whole time because nice. I, nice. love, I love Deftones. Well, uh, Lateralis uh, came up, I think, just a, a minute ago uh, from two thousand one. I cannot. They really only have put out five albums. Th so this is number they, three. Yeah, we'll take their sweet time with it. I know. I know. Ten, and of course, ten years. Maynard's uh, got. Other projects, two, three yeah. plus, yeah, not even you know more than music stuff nowadays too. Uh, Thirteen tracks, seventy nine minutes. Um, they have. Uh, we're getting, I think, close to having all of their albums be on uh, having been on an episode. Uh, first time for this one. Um, wow, wow. I'm sure ten thousand days, quite a bit. Uh, Ten thousand days, uh, a anima. Anima, really? Um, cool. I, I th I've had one, if not two, people have two two albums, I believe. Uh, anyway, um, so the Apple Music blurb for this one says uh, it starts off. I think no, this might be in the middle. The trademarks of their next two decades are born here on their third album. Sure. Um, so I'm assuming you're familiar with all five. Oh yeah. And so is that an accurate claim? I mean, yeah, I could, I could agree with that. I can see that. You know, uh, there's there's a lot of a little bit of back and forth, and you know, <laughs> my go-to thought is you know always getting hung up on the fact that so many people think they're very overrated and, and oh, overplayed and whatever and overloved, and that there's you know a dumb douchebaggy kind of fan base to it and uh, i don't know i don't really get into that all that or buy into all that or i'm not really much of a deep deep diver myself but um yeah musically what i hear yeah uh, i i hear some differences some some progression throughout their timeline and discography and mo a lot of people will just write them off and say every song sounds the same kind of shit um i would argue the opposite yeah i, know, I mean I know. like i i know that you you know that if you know them at all if you, you know that you it's hear tool. something and you don't like it and you're, you're probably going to generalize it and be like yeah oh that sounds like you know the same exact song. but their songs uh a lot of times um they the the meat and potatoes in the middle and the like there's they don't stay sounding just like they sound in the beginning of the song yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different right and you know going back to deftones definitely with deftones they they do a lot of that progressive uh, stuff with their songwriting really really well tool is i mean they're a progressive metal band but yeah. they are like in my opinion the, the kings of that shit that progressive writing style they can go from negative one <laughs> all yeah. the way up to 10 or 11 yeah with with so just the the energy and the sound the, in it, a single song you it's had just, five to choose from but this one was your pick i, I chose this one because obviously you know schism's on here um, yeah schism was my introduction um to tool is probably with a lot of people it's it's probably easily got to be their most popular song um as well you but think funny enough i picked like the top album of each band, arguably, oh, well, whatever. selling selling wise, you like that what you like, intentional. No. I like what I like, and and um, you had not only said what I asked, what I thought were the all time greatest, but I I uh, clung on to the most influential part. Thank you. Yeah, you know, so I thought that was more important. It's it, it again. That's what weighed my decision. Going on, back uh, to language, uh, the Alice on this. Many, not many. Uh, several folks have shown up to do this and sat in that chair and like didn't read or comprehend uh, the exchange 
yeah uh, you know uh, and, and to me accurately yeah but but yeah. it could be like that maybe maybe i word things but weird it's just i guess um, how they convey it yeah but anyway uh that's i mean that's um i th- i think that the influential part is important because I, t- to me music is that powerful yes yeah, like, i wouldn't necessarily say that that any definitely not all of these are in my top five favorite albums okay. of all time necessarily but um, yeah, the the most influential is what stood out to me in the fact that, you know, when I discovered them all the way through my own musical experiences and, and uh, creative implementation, my own trying to yeah. write and yeah. be, be in a band, and even now it has been the most impactful, uh, yeah, easily. easily well, easily it's five. funny that where I'm going with it, uh, where I am realizing that I'm going in my mind with this is uh, walk this way. Uh, music to me was, uh, and this actually has nothing to do with Aerosmith, but, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like, you know, the first time you get high or, mm-hmm. or, or, uh, cause my first couple of times were not pleasant, uh, at all. Yeah. And, and, but when you, when you finally are like, oh, now like reggae and Bob Marley sounds way different like you know <laughs> like i get it i'm yeah. in there yeah. uh it's sort of like wow i used to walk this way i mm-hmm. used to this is how i walked from the time i took my first step until just now and now i literally walk differently for sure or or or, or what insert your verb of choice because uh music was that impactful um and so i mean uh, it's been that way for me like i discover and it's just like I think I think and I think of the world and view the world differently than I did before getting into this album. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. definitely. Well said. Um, and that makes me think about several things. But the fact that music has definitely given me a lot of guidance in my life and and there you go steered <laughs> steered my decisions and my lifestyle and my taste in yes. life. But honestly, so is so is smoking weed. Honestly, yep. you know, yeah, it like changed my. I mean, they changed my life. It like, really did. Uh, um, yeah, and they and they've inter interweaved a lot. Yes, I you know I've uh, both of them have. I need you to be with me at all times so you can make the words right. that I'm trying to make. <laughs> 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 each other's sentences. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this, but yeah, they've intertwined so much, and and they fueled each my passion for each of them, and that's and the art too. Uh, it's that's what the culmination has created. You know, it's Stony Doom now, yeah, and that's yeah. what we love about it, and that's that's why I'm very very happy and pleased with it, and that it's grown to further than I had anticipated when I started it. Cool, um, and we're just we're just rolling with it because it's. It's good, clean fun. Um, so this thing, de- I did a double take on this. Debuted at number one on Billboard and sold a half a million copies in the first week. Ooh, we, I believe it. I mean, I guess they were they just, ready. But they did Anima before that, and Anima blew up. Well, I mean, so. so we're, I wonder, you know, were places sold out of it? I mean, there's, did, were they ready to go that quick and that deep? The The label and the music stores and... Do you, do you know, were people like, dude, we're not getting another shipment in for, uh, or what man, do you think? You I think honestly they don't know. It's, I'm young enough where CDs, I was just kind of on the outs of CDs, like MP3s were starting to come in and Okay, shit. 2001, I guess to Napster honest, is here, uh, LimeWire yeah, is here. I okay, did, okay. I didn't even probably own my first, like my actual CD. Uh, well, no, I was getting CDs early on, like soundtracks and stuff for my birthdays. I can't, yeah, I got okay. like like CDs and like early elementary school and stuff. I, I guess I did, but um, definitely not, not a lot. And I, I definitely wasn't like asking for very many specific CDs just because mm. stuff was becoming a little more prevalent online already anyways. So no, I, honestly, I, I can't say I'm real up to speed with CD sales, um, which is unfortunate. I kind of wish, I mean, it's, I wish I was whatever. born and earlier and was more, you know, well, had it, experience with, with physical purchases more and so stuff. I start, uh, as soon as I'm like babysitting and cutting grass and whatever, I'm spending, and then when I have jobs, spending all my money on cassettes, and I held out like late '90s. I'm still buying because like people that were selling me cassettes were like, "Dude, <laughs> make, you, stop! I don't want to order these anymore." Yeah. Anyway, but, but so then it, you, and CDs would come in the like big rectangular plastic thing <laughs> that they would have to punch out of to in order for the alarm not to go off when you yeah. bought it so it's like think about i mean 
the world of freight is a very weird <clears throat> and and you know sometimes troublesome thing since at least pandemic mm. because it's like so many of whatever fits in a box and so many boxes fit on a truck or a ship come and then it's until the next time we do that you know what i mean so anyway yeah, uh, right. that's that's they have been so fascinating to me uh and i'm drawing a blank on the single uh from their first record that had the video with the like claymation uh prison uh, sex no no no, no, no. uh um, undertow yeah um is the record right no under- no yeah okay. undertow I, i'm sorry yeah you're right undertow it was off of undertow so was uh well, what's the tune i wouldn't prison sex had a weird claymation video but it, it was did? uh-huh Sober, uh, Sober's the, the know, he did, the album. he did several, um, so I think it's Sober, several music videos, Adam, Adam, the guitar player anyway, did, did several artsy claymation they, type music videos that are very strange. So same sort of deal, uh, you know, heard Sober, you know, yeah. and it's like, I've never heard an, anything remotely close, same as with Alice in Chains, but so, so here that's, that's kind of the introduction of tool to the world from my eyes mm. and then they've only put out four records since then yeah but the huge numbers growth wise in in the fan base from one wet record to the next is mind-blowing yeah they're i mean they just enormous right i would argue they're one of the biggest bands of all time yeah and and numbers wise and strangely or or maybe intentionally like one of the most private sure yeah. right i mean there you don't there's not access to maynard and 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 company uh yeah, for they, they kind of give you what they want they control and it. and say so yeah. like you here here we wrote this we'd like you to listen to it when we come to your town come see us then the rest is for us to be you know do our yeah. thing and you do yours i man. think to that point that that's kind of what i really ended up like diving into a bit more and clinging to and uh noticing and admiring is is they don't care how much disconnect they create with like the fan bases and the audience. They've you know got more than enough of a fan base, but but you know they they project what what they want to, and and Maynard especially has got so many weird quirky persona type personality things that he does, especially his stage presence and mm-hmm. his public presence nowadays, where. Um, or yeah, I mean they they kind of curate and manufacture what what you get and see from them, and I like all the like innuendoists and and like silly quirky stuff. Uh, that's where we that's where I personally got a lot of inspiration for like the like tongue in cheek and innuendo type stuff that we do in our music. Like, nice. It, at at face value, you know, it sounds heavy and hard and serious and aggressive and all that and then you know if you really did a, a unlayering and a deep dive you'd be psychoanalysis like, this is yeah this is some goofy ass nonsensical shit like your stuff or theirs both both, both. yeah okay. exactly okay. yeah okay. i think you know a lot of deep dive stuff on tool even if when it does sound and come out serious same with us if you think about it, like the way they went about it or, or, or uh, what they did was really quirky and silly huh. and kind of goofy. Like uh, specifically, I'll, g- I'll give you an example because I'm sounding really nonsensical. No, Mon- no, no. Mantra. This is a fun fact I was looking forward to sharing. Cause okay, I was like, cool. I cool. Was, like sharing this fun fact. Mantra track number four is, is the interlude to schism. Okay. okay. I don't, you listen to this album all the way through recently. Um, not all the way through, huh? Okay, well, so it's a, just an interlude sound bite track, and it's this really fucking hideous type droning that audio I'm, sound. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I'm not staying with that. No, you it's know. most people probably skip it. Anyways, yeah. fun fact: to my knowledge, what I heard not too terribly long ago was that uh, that is the slow down so- sound of uh, Maynard squeezing a cat. Wow. Yeah, and it just makes this like weird dissonant creepy huh. sound and they slowed it down 
And I don't think he's like necessarily hurting the cat, but it's like kind of making us yeah. uncomfortable. Some cats noise. will do that if you yeah, exactly. reach in their Petling. direction. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, eh, 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 don't I don't know. So, but just shit like that is, yeah. is a fine well, example. Well, one of them, uh, like just listening to it at face value, you're like, oh wow, that's that's creepy. That's cool. That's you know, kind of dissonant, and weird. But I just think that's fucking hilarious that in is. reality. One of the, uh, I wish I could remember. Uh, maybe Anima or 10,000, but uh, the vinyl pressing, I don't know if it's been every pressing or just the original, uh, at the end of one of the sides, it, it, there's a locked groove, and, and and the you arrive at that through however many seconds or minutes of the sound of crackling vinyl yeah and then it then and then and there's a locked groove so the needle drops into it and so it, it's it, you have to go I and it's know like that. how, how to find fuck out which one you know like, let's fuck with see people. i like quirky little shit yeah, like yeah, that. yeah interactive little bits like that hidden My tracks shit's broken hidden man tracks. Yeah, oh right. you did that so on purpose. another another fun thing that i've observed i have never actually read or noticed this anywhere else but i am almost positive that it is intentional that like all their CDs are like kind of bulky and obscure sized. Huh. Um, this one not so much. This one's pretty flush with its sleeve. But um, the Ten Thousand Days booklet I have is actually longer, so it sticks out in my stack physically, and it's got like a trifold thing. But and and then like one of the other ones I want to say is just like, the book taller. Yeah, or the, the whole the CD booklet. Yeah, it's 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 the same like that would height. drive me bananas. It does drive me bananas. <laughs> But I'm like, oh, there's fucking tool in yeah, the stack. Thanks, man. <laughs> I know where yeah. to find it. Yeah. Uh, so y you said uh, silly, quirky. I, I I get that in like swaths listening to tool, right? Which, which I don't it's listen not to. Not super obvious. I don't listen to a ton of right. tool, but I've gotten that. But I've also gotten perhaps equally uh, that that's I'm not sure what they're talking about, but it sounds like they're talking about smart people shit. I, you, yeah, you and know that's, that's why a lot of people knock it too because like oh that's super nerdy shit it's way over the top. That's and not, but it, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it was intentionally I, written that way. Maybe it was just a coincidence. You say nerdy. I uh, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't find care. comfort in these are the things that I know and right. these are the things that I don't know. Yeah. Like science and math yeah, yeah. is over here. That's, I don't know that's somebody's strength. Yeah, like yeah, and I'm f that's fucking fine. Yeah, I like being a no whatever you know. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's so a like silly I say, I don't criticism. Do deep, deep, two deep dives sure. of, of stuff on shit like that. I have heard that kind of stuff, and it it's kind of drives me crazy. But I, I just know that I like what I hear, and I heard Tool a lot. Listen, a lot of Tool growing up. It was one of my dad and I's favorite bands, uh, probably is still, and um, listen to a lot of Tool and Tool CDs uh, driving around. And uh, yeah, uh, is was always has been one of my favorite bands. Crack the Sky, Oof. Mastodon. 2009 sky has an e on the end uh, this is one of the i'm a soup you mentioned your booklet i love uh liner notes yeah. um when i would buy new tapes uh, as i would come home and sit at my dad and the smell mm -hmm. uh I, I i never understood why it was important to put engineers and producers and mixers and all these other people but i definitely wanted to know band member names and i wanted the lyrics to be in there yeah. and I, the year it was uh and, and cover art cover art to me is uh you know, super important, not necessarily for every record you do, but sure. you want to have a couple of cool. This is one of the coolest covers um, I've ever seen. And I don't, uh, it's like uh, it's, Z Zoltar. It's not. From, have you guys ever seen the movie Big? Uh, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, big, yeah. The when he goes to the the machine that makes him big. Oh yeah, and it's yeah, the the, yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the the question guy, the yeah, psychic, yeah. psychic yeah. reader guy. Yeah, yeah. But way way cooler because yeah. it goes is all these other. So my this is my record slip mat of that artwork. Okay, I got okay. it at the would it be the ten or the fifteen year an anniversary. So this is oh eight, right? Oh, I think the last two are 09. 09. Okay. Yeah. Um, Which, strangely, I wrote 08 and then realized that no, I made I a mistake. Right, and, I know, yeah, and the Cuddy is 09. Um, anyway. Yeah, so it would have been the 15 year anniversary? Of this record? Yeah. Okay. They did a tour of it. Anyway, an anniversary tour where they played in its entirety. Okay. And oh my God, that was a pinnacle experience. Well, uh, this is, oh, uh, it's. 
They've most got, most important. No, this is my all time fi- favorite band as of the last seven okay. years. They've. I mean, yeah. interesting that they're doing that because it's only seven tracks, and track four has like four parts. Yeah. So and it's like a story. All of it. Yeah, they played all of it, and they, obviously they didn't have the guest uh, feature or a few um, out with them. They just filled in uh, themselves. But uh, yeah, they played the whole thing in its entirety, and then a few uh, as like encore stuff. Um, on other albums but that was an incredible show it rained a little bit it was oh my god it was such a vibe but yeah i got i it's, got uh, that artwork on slip mat at that uh record slip nice mat at, that, at that anniversary show so my really my only note um about this album uh you just made like 10 times more awkward by saying that it's your current favorite um and that is uh you know we talked about music and and and, and cannabis sort of interweaving i have um always been puzzled and obviously to each or his own or her own you know not everything is for everybody but i've never understood uh the marriage of uh metal and marijuana um really? yeah like uh because sim- like uh you know you um i think of sweating like paint power chords yeah. and screaming and yeah. ma- maybe you <laughs> do a lot with all of your body on stage or as a fan and uh, i'm i'm good thank you though um as as opposed to my uh uh canvas my marijuana canvas is like Chill. give me a hammock yeah. and a breeze and I uh a, a, a I beverage i don't know i, I don't know so but uh, are you generally drawn to metal at all anyways no okay, I'll see. no that's, that's a little bit of the disconnect and to each his own I, it's totally so fine. so from my side of the fence it's like wow look at those the new neighbors man and <laughs> from you're probably doing the same yeah. you know what i mean i mean i'm jam band dude i'm uh my my kids are named after fish songs and i love the dead and yeah i did live for way way way, way too long in classic rock land yeah like uh until probably uh, the fox didn't have anything that i hadn't heard you know right. um and you know, hip-hop and rap and um you know i i realized it's the whole point of this is i realized at some point that i was kind of just staying i was you know still discovering stuff but i kind of going back to my favorites yeah. a little too much yep. even though my favorites can have variety and so the the interest is well let's see what other people are into discovery just the, it, yeah the, the, the feeling um and the power of discovery. so anyway um these guys <laughs> uh wildly impressive um i'm you beyond the anniversary tour you've seen them live i've, I've seen them several times. several times uh, four times I just okay saw them in the last month okay and then are they um so for a specific tour or maybe across tours uh are, are they same set list every night guys no. well every night um of the tour pretty much mm, yeah from what i got i mean if you're but, doing an anniversary set list pretty good um every tour okay yeah okay Each interesting time I've seen them they play a little little different handful of songs they i think uh I, I never do this, but I, I did actually finally pull them up on Setlist FM, uh, uh, like in the last week or two, and was comparing great uh, their set lists from each of the times I have seen them. Oh, being, cool! Yeah, I love that. I love is, that. I never have done that, and I never do that. But I, I was kind of bored, and and uh, not that I don't have anything to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I was taking, forcing myself to do nothing for a moment, and I uh, was like, oh, you know, what if I? I'm gonna. I just saw Mastodon the other day, and you know. I know they played some killer songs I had never heard live before. So I went and compared, like, which ones have I only seen once and which ones do they always play? And sure. So there was, like, three or four, at least, that they always, always play. Yep. But, yep. yeah, they, they, they do a good variety and stuff. Well, um, I, you know, for a long time, I, I suppose, whatever, in, in my initial, disc- that period where I'm like, I'm going to, cultivate my own musical tastes and it's not just oldies with mom and Oak Ridge boys with dad or whatever, you know, uh, it's, there was a good pocket of that introductory, my own taste where I was like, I am 1000% going to be a musician. I'm going to be a rock star. And I got a guitar and was taking lessons. I also had a bass at some point and in, in college it was 
keys. I was taking piano lessons and I had a right. little Yamaha. I have a, a dual uh, Technics turntables and a coffin out there that I bought like way into adulthood because I was going to be a DJ. I just, I don't have, right. I've always lacked the discipline yeah. to put in the hours. Um, but if I didn't lack the discipline and I was a musician and I was gigging in a band, I would think that the, uh, aside from artistic expression and joy and hoping to make a living, I would, I would think that the one thing that I would want to avoid is same set list. You, oh, yeah. Like it sounds, I mean, obviously it's fun. You're yeah. playing rock and roll on stage, you know, uh, there's a lot right, of joy just inherently in that, but at some point too much repetition. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Um, that's, Fun, fun side note. So what is uh, fun fact? We do, we have what, four or five, six original songs total that right. we that we play at all right now. Right, and we play anywhere from thirty to forty five minutes. But we, we won't. Uh, I personally will not play like the same exact set list. Like we have to at least change order or something. Sure. Do some different skits. And are you guys something. doing any covers or? Yeah, we uh, we tried to do a cover one cover for uh, most shows. Cool. We, right on. Uh, we've done a cover for every show, but two or three at least okay right on um so staying in 2009 uh man on the moon kid cuddy i, I there's a, a sequel to i'm assuming but this the original was the one you wanted you had on yeah, this right yeah um i love them both but i thought i knew him from like uh uh Funky Precedent, Jurassic Fight, like that late '90s push of. I thought he was oh, he's featured. Than that. No, I know he was born in I think '84, which is you know super young to me. Um, yeah, sure. But uh, so this is first of nine, twelve tracks, fifty-eight minutes. MGMT and and Ratatat are featured on here. Uh, Kanye and Common. Um, ironically, he quit smoking weed in 2011. Uh, due to, well, for, it said for his kid, but also his frustration with constantly being associated with the drug and stoner culture. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, bit. I knew he quit and stuff right. for a while. I think he's back though. I think he's back to smoking and stuff. Well, he, almost certain. He, he, might, he went back to man on the moon three. It's like, few years you know, ago shortly and, after reading that I read, uh, he had a lot of mental health issues well, for several years. He said, and uh, really fell off almost. He, he quit. A, a bunch of these he's quit uh, alcohol and, and and whatever a couple of other quit different drinking, things yeah. and he's i cold, cold turkey i don't believe yeah. in uh rehab and blah and then like two lines later it's like he, he's quoted in an interview saying i had to go to rehab for cocaine uh, use no, and i'm like yeah. wait a minute now yeah, i don't know yeah. uh, what's going on here <laughs> um but really fun record uh yeah. i definitely knew uh it's one of the last Maybe the one with Day him. and Night. Surely you knew that one. Day with, and Night was a huge hit when it came out. No, it, I mean Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit of Happiness was also a huge yeah. hit. Yeah, um, that was on the Project X movie. Uh, they had a, a remake of it. I don't know if you remember that movie, but it was with Matthew of, Broderick. Uh, Project X. It was a house party movie. It was like a, a handheld shot. The original Project. Oh, X. Oh, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> I haven't heard of that one. Uh, Matthew Broderick, uh, F Ferris Bueller. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so not too long after um, Ferris comes out, this is his next big film, and it's about uh, <sighs> there's monkeys and they're sending them to space. Uh, so they're uh, they they sort of live in like a in a captive situation, and they're um, uh, he, he knows them super well. And may, maybe he's even part of the project, but at some point it's discovered that uh, there's inherent uh, harm and danger, maybe from uh, something nuclear or a chem. I don't even. And so now it's like, let's, we don't. And of course, the, the man wants to continue with the mission. And if something happens to the monkeys, forget about it there. And then him and his people are like, no, 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 we got to save the monkeys. It's, 
I loved that movie I when I was ca- when I was younger. Wow. It's really good, and wow. and you'll fucking have a box of Kleenex nearby. I mean, well, Project X does not compare to that Project X. Okay, uh, quite the same, but it sure is fun and entertaining and funny. Nice it's house just, party movie. It's a house. It's a movie. Uh, a hand held camera shot oh boy actual full production nice movie but make make you think it's just a bunch of kids running a handheld camera yeah. kind of thing from what i remember so many years since i've seen it now but um anyways yeah they just have like some big giant party in california fun fact that movie is based off of a, a real story of a giant house party that got out of control oh and boy like and like uh it got shut down and then like people like for like several houses radius uh, this party was going on <laughs> wow that is <laughs> it, a party. It actually took it actually happened in texas i heard okay okay but this movie took place in like california or something the parents go away and so they throw a giant party and it gets way out of hand because way too many people show up sure so but it's a funny fucking movie um anyways i Percy had happiness remake was in that movie okay uh, okay even more popular okay. from that movie that was only within a few years after this album came out I had one of those when my mom was out of town and this was uh we like the the, the house that I lived in, in high school and and the house before that we had living rooms that we couldn't go in cuz there was nice furniture and ni- it's this is for hosting and it's like we don't host ever anyway uh I had had a, a probably spilled the beans too early in the week and I mean hundreds of people Aww. showed up uh and it just shouldered and so so the the rear leg of that of that couch the corner behind you uh, is a cinder block because the leg busted oh, off yeah. uh, and then i think the one over here has got wood glue and rubber bands holding it together um but i mean it and it, we were every, i was like we we can smoke in here C- cigarettes fucking people were putting out cigarettes on my on my mom's furniture and the floor yeah. and you know in a matter of moments uh the cops and everybody's filing uh, out i filed right out with them yeah like, fuck this yeah, i don't know these people but you know i used to uh again now that i'm old always just be so puzzled at how house parties get broken up well like for that one i mean both sides of the street Everyone's lined on. with cars yeah. as far as you can ah. see. And now... Probably as, got some complaints. What's, oh, dude. Uh, now, as uh, you know, an old person with kids, like one person, uh, one car that I don't recognize. Part, yeah. I'm like, who's that motherfucker? <laughs> Call you the know, cops. Let alone like <laughs> 200. You check that out? <laughs> no, but you, you're aware. Yeah, oh yeah. And so all of a sudden, if there's like 200 cars... Now you're like, how do how do how how does anyone have a party yeah, exactly, without exactly, <laughs> getting exactly. it spoiled? Well, this this record uh, was fun and 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 quite a pivot from the other four. It really is, and I had to, you know, I didn't have to, I didn't have to throw in a variety, but I had to include this one because it was incredibly influential and impactful to me in high school, um, and uh, I, you know, I've always been into rap and hip hop and stuff. Um, funny enough, I always remember uh, browsing a hot topic one time, and they had like two or three t-shirts of this guy and i had like barely even heard of him this was right when this album came out hot topic yeah hot topic had kid cutty shirts is that a fast food place hot topic yeah what are we talking come on dude you're not that old i'm pretty old oh Uh, you're you're giving me shit right hot topic is what you don't know what hot topic is uh have you heard spencer's yeah spencer hot topic it's it's Spencer's is where Goth you can buy store. Uh, like dildos. Spencer's and is like the band gag posters. version of Hot Topic. Wow, how do you not know what Hot Topic is? I don't know, man. I just don't go to malls very much. I did. I did a bunch. You Maybe if I saw one, you I'd weren't be like, goth oh. enough. You really didn't like metal. Oh, I know. Not a metalhead. No, not a metalhead. And when I saw goth people, I crossed the okay. other side of the street. He doesn't know hot topic. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I'll give you a pass. It's cool, man. Oh Everyone's man, everyone's got their thing. But anyways, hot topic is like this tiny little weirdo kid store. It's 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 basically for teens young adults and they okay. got especially they've broadened their horizon now it's like all kinds of other nerdy stuff that nerdy tv shows and movies cool and and, and boy band stuff sure and they got a broader variety but it's still you get the 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 goth uh punk kid vibe in there still, okay and they okay. still appeal to that which is cool i i like it i think it's neat and it's very unique nice. that's why i'm surprised you're, you're not aware of them because it stands out just as much, if not more, than Spencer's stands out. I, I used think. to, I used to, well, you know, 
I would have weird uh, experiences about going to Spencer's. Like, yeah. Like, there's so much shit in there that I want to look at. I'll, and some of it I want to buy. Yeah. But I'd never, you know, I'm always spending my money on music. <laughs> uh, very seldom on posters, which yeah. was, I, that was my favorite thing to do at Spencer. But there's, also, there's some stuff in here that I don't know if I'm, am I supposed to be looking at this? Is it supposed to be in? <laughs> well, you learned some shit in Spencer's. Yeah, exactly. And that was like appealing, but also, you mm-hmm. know, a little shamey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I maybe I'm, I don't know. Anyway, for sure, Spencer's uh, is quite the variety, but to- Hot Topics a little less variety and a, a little more serious and theme oriented. Okay, but <laughs> back to the back to Kid Cuddy shirts, <laughs> wherever that was. Right. <laughs> Somehow they had, for some reason, they had Kid Cuddy shirts in there, and and you know, for for that time, obviously, I said they're pretty versatile now, but for that time, it was like mostly like heavy metal type bands, a few old school rapper type T shirts, but I was like what the hell, who's this guy and stuff? And I was like, great, this is just going to be another, you know, generic rap artist kind of thing. And, you know, I finally ended up coming around to him somehow or another. Mm. I, I think I heard Day, Day and Night is what I heard. And it's got a cool music video and stuff. And a um, very popular song, uh, especially from my age group sure. at the time. But sure. um, anyways. Uh, it's good stuff. It Maybe I make... really early into me smoking weed. And so the sound and the vibe and the themes and obviously him being very associated with being a stoner. And the the stoner music tropes that you know whether he intended to or not, right, are right, very prevalent, yeah, and very obvious in this this album and his early work. And uh, well, it made me it. It. curious to you know give one or more of his others for sure and see what it, he yeah, like I said, he went through a lot a little later in life, mm. and his mm. musical career really takes some weird turns, yeah, and his his life. Career. Well, he's. Uh, Dabbles but, in other art too. Yeah, he's he does like acting also. Acting. Me? Okay, he's he's had some decent acting roles. Okay, um, some fairly bigger productions, I believe. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, he's 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 definitely doing pretty good from what I've seen these days. Like I said, he he just finally put out Man on the Moon three after years of talking about it, and after okay. after really going in a very different directions for several years and uh, going through his own thing, he kind of came back to a, a similar but still very different sound and, and completed the trilogy of Man on the Moon, oh. essentially. So okay, that okay. That was always kind of the goal, Good always stuff. what he talked about. I cool. was happy with it. I was happy with it. Like I said, especially after the <clears throat> several years in between, there was some, he did, uh, he did like this, this punky rap-ish album. I can't even remember what it's uh, hmm. called, Trippin' on something. I don't remember. It's a very trippy-looking swirly looking album cover mm-hmm. and i i think if i heard right like he did like a bunch of psychedelics and just kind of okay. tried some different stuff sure. and it's very clearly experimental check it out for the sake of checking it out sure. you'll you'll be like this is not the same guy kind of right, stuff right, but right. it's it's out there it's strange i didn't really grasp it but sure but all that to say is he's he's really gone through an interesting journey but yeah. anyways going back to the impactfulness of this album um yeah it a lot of a lot of awesome stoner memories uh, through cool. high school and college with very this cool. one and hearing this one and uh, also just brought me a lot of comfort. You know, it's obviously nice. very very vibey. Yes, a lot of good vibe type, yep. type music in there. And, yeah, and uh, it's it's mostly family friendly. You know, he uses a little bit of heavy language and stuff, but right. I think all things considered, especially there are a lot plenty of rap stuff. plenty of people that use way worse. Yeah, or for way sure. more frequent. For whatever. Sure. So. Right on. Well, uh, five goofy questions, and we'll get you out of here. Okay. Uh, The first is uh, you can have uh, lunch with any person of your choice, dead or alive, who and why. Hmm. Lunch. Or coffee or a beer or whatever. You know, you want to have an omelet. Oh, boy. (laughs) Questions I'll overthink. Right? (laughs) Um, Hmm. Dead or alive. I don't. Prince is pretty cool, I guess. There, that's just, a great I'm answer. I'm just gonna go that's with a Prince. Great answer. He seems really neat. He seems like he'd have some crazy life stories. Like I, I'm, I really am interested in like, like stories and people's like, uh, experiences for and sure. Life stories. I, I think there's, especially so much beyond what goes in a famous people or anybody. Obviously, uh, regular people don't get autobiographies really or any kind of biographies written about them but right so the stuff in between the yeah. like 
you get to talking about stories and stuff and people remember all these little things and yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I would want to pick somebody cool's for sure brain. Somebody cool with yeah. all the experiences yeah. like like life experiences like Prince that yeah. uh that there was this one time in my life stories. where I just shed my name and I was a symbol. <laughs> that was yeah. uh okay, so um you have the opportunity to visit your past self at any age. Uh, of your choosing what age are you choosing and and what are you saying hmm. maybe like between 12 and 14 okay uh, just uh getting started with guitar and stuff and writing writing music more seriously and wanting to write original music okay um, I guess just yeah, uh, giving myself a good little pep talk, a little uh, nice. Keep it up. Uh, I, that's uh, a, that's a good age to have that because uh, right, and we all need it. Tried to talk myself, and I don't know if it would have worked because you know I was stubborn and a pothead and and doing my own multiple things, trying to still have friends and a social life and experiences. But right, I would have probably tried to tell myself to buckle down and be even a little more serious about it and uh, get started performing even earlier. You know. Um, never too late, but the sooner the better. Right. Thing, there's, know. but there's never too late. Right. But there's, uh, there's some value for sure. in in just being a kid when yeah. you're a kid, yeah. like I'm real happy about see, when we, I finally started and got to where I am now. Yeah. You see always, plenty of examples yeah. of people that didn't. Yeah. They have fame and they're like, that person's, f you know, yeah. They've been through some stuff cause they weren't allowed to be a kid, you know? Right. Anyway. Uh, complete this sentence for me, if you would, please. The world would become immediately a better place in which to live, if only. We would end cannabis prohibition. I mean, I'm, it's a great one, too. Is there a go-to band or a go-to song that if you hear them, you leave the room? Leave the room. Or, you know, j uh, damn near uh, leave the room. Hmm. Not uh, none that I would probably actually like leave the room for. I don't think I'm I'm that <laughs> stubborn okay. or okay. uh or petty. Um there's several that just eventually get very overplayed to me and I you know, I would personally skip. Um you know, apparently I am always I always somehow end up in charge of the ox cord. Um I'm, I'm happy. I was curious I'm about that for the drive here. Happy, and happy the other to times. do so, but I always say anyone's welcome to step up and ask to take it over. But you know what? If you're not playing music, damn it, I will. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so so playing music here. This is the you know I I, I wish that I had a uh, hundred. 25 of these questions and it was like uh you know a lottery every time there you go. but uh, uh, there a lot of some of these have been asked a bunch of times um and that one that's only the second time and just the first time i asked it was last episode and no hesitation dude said four non-blondes i was like shit man that was ready we were you, and and you know for me uh it's <laughs> meatloaf and bon jovi like i i really don't like guns and roses okay That's okay roses voice really annoys me um i you know one again a band i can appreciate sure i can admire in certain aspects but yeah it really kind of turns me off <laughs> like, have you uh, seen something the, else please have you seen the meme of uh an 87 uh uh, what the fuck's that? Appetite era. Yeah. A picture of Axl Rose, and there's a girl tweeting below it. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. if I could only. And then he's like, hey. hey. <laughs> like, She's no. like, beat it, nerd. And he's like, I'm actually that. Dude. That's me in the picture. <laughs> um, okay. Last but not least, uh, true or false, it is okay to wear the t shirt of the band whose show you're going to see tonight. Look at this guy. He's 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 wearing the shirt yeah, of his own that's band. Not, that's, <laughs> that's not the question. He's, but he's repping his own. To merch. answer your question, yes, absolutely. To wear the the shirt of the band you're going to see. Yeah, that's even more okay than what he's doing. Uh, I'm, <laughs> that is also okay. But I'm just saying. I hell think, yeah, it's okay. I think this is one thousand percent okay. Yeah, this makes sense. The, the other at least we're not playing tonight. The that other one. Worse, the but. other one. Like as f yes, I'm, I've uh, always done that. That's like, never. That's the only never. thing I do. You're gonna say no. No. Uh oh. So here's why. We're gonna be here's, here a while. Here's why. We 
unless you are a plus one or a loved one or what you know somebody who got drug along last minute <laughs> we're all at this sh- we are all fans of the band obviously i know you're a fan of that band that's why we're we both have fucking paid Maybe for that it. came show the me, opener show me what it, that's that's an interesting i've done that a couple times more recently finally but it's an interesting point Just saying but still uh i know that you like, like this like a band. festival i mean what, what about a festival someone technically a headline right what is but your there's sh- a bunch of bands what does your shirt say True. I it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 this your Boring, opportunity Boring to Boring show me what you're about. Yeah. I know you're about this band. This, we're, we're both here, so show me. You know, I don't Some, fucking something know. That, well, but okay. But are you saying that you're gonna be like, wow? I never heard of that band. Please tell me all about that band now. I, I mean, if it's a, a or are you gonna write it down? You gonna remember? You gonna write it down and you gonna check it out later? I might. I might. Yeah. I might I argue also, that you won't. Also, but okay. Also, I know that's what you would like to hope. <laughs> also, I like uh, if somebody sees in my shirt, man. You know, and it's a it's about a oh, different totally, yeah. it's about a different thing that we're not here to see. Totally. Um, or uh, I mean, if it's if it's a cool enough shirt, I, I might I do carry around a pen at all times, and some most of the time you know, I have a little it, yeah. pocket notebook. Mm-hmm. I can make a little. Um, I don't know. I just, I just think that it's a, it's a, like it's a canvas, you know. Show, show me anyway. I, I, I hear you. That's a, that's a totally a fair point. I respect that. I, uh, I, I don't know. I guess that's the 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 nerdy side of me is what I always say is why I am into. That's why I say yes because well, I, so obviously we're here for that band. So I've I've seen. I just saw my. 81st and 82nd fish shows a few weeks ago and i've the dude that i was with holy shit i've seen he's i've probably seen them 40 times with him you're worse than the deadheads and he is he'll band shirt and band visor go into the venue and I'm well, like, what, what do the? you what do you wear like your button-up dad beach shirt probably no, i would wear something like this no, okay uh not, not a band shirt at all then uh it means most do, of my shirts have something to do with do music. Do you wear a band shirt to shows more or less often? I I mean I can, I have no idea. So yeah, no. so the the shirt that I will uh I can't remember what I wore first night and I, there's a picture of it somewhere. But second night I wore uh a shirt that I had made for this show. Nice. Um, and it's just it, speaking of deadheads. It's uh, the first time I saw Dead and Company. Um, Jeff Cominti is the keyboard player, okay. and he's been in a bunch of different. Um, but he, I'd never heard him before, and I could tell only that he was really good, but he was really low in the mix. Mm. And so I was like, we should make. This is seven years ago. We should make turn Jeff up shirts. <laughs> My buddy's like, dude. You would sell eight million of those. Oh, so holy crap! I j- just made them seven years later, and guess what happened in the interim? They turned Jeff up. Uh. <laughs> so it's like pointless. Uh, but I uh. still anyway. I wore one of those. I, I wore that shirt second night, and uh, it you know I got one person. I was in line for a beer, and dude was like, "Nice," and I was like, "Worth he, it. He gets it. Worth it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Worth it." <laughs> um, but I mean, I've been to fish shows and seen folks wearing like uh, Modesky Martin and Wood beanie, and I'm like, "You did it right, man." For you, sure, you know, because it sure. shows me a different thing. That you're Related into. shirt. So yeah, uh, so <clears throat> I will say my personal thing, not my like take on it, not what I necessarily think other people should do. Here's what I have more or less almost always done is I will wear. Uh, most of my shirts are, are shirts. I'll try to buy them when I see that band, right? So oh. a concert shirt, a concert bought T-shirt. Um, I mean, to be fair, about half my shirts are still, you know, stuff I bought online or in stores or whatever. But almost all of those bands that I have shirts of in general, I've at least seen. So if right, if I wear the headlining band's shirt to the show, it's kind of my own, like... Sucking my own dick. They're already seeing that band, so, probably. Okay, so it's like I a don't. Veteran ship. Uh, generally speaking, like I, I'm not. Uh, I mean, the pennant circle is kind of the only exception, but I don't rock uh, championship merch of the teams <laughs> that I like. Yeah. 
Um, and I also don't, you know, Mastodon Summer Tour 2019. Mm-hmm. I'm not buying that. It's a fucking boy. Everybody, I bought those shirts when I was 15. The dated ones. And, yeah. Well, I don't uh, I go to the show and buy the shirt and put it on at the show and then oh. work to school the next <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. This is just, it's just the band's name. Yeah, I don't do that. Dates. I That's, don't do that. I won't wear a brand new shirt. I'll, well, I will say that. Uh, I also won't because I got I got to wash it first. Yeah, I just, I, I just prefer to wash. Yeah, I'll throw it over my shoulder and hold on to it. But I, but I th- the point being, I think that's a boring shirt. If you make a here's my band name and here are uh, our dates. that's the worst. Now you got me there. If you buy the shirt at that show and then put it on, <laughs> you're a dweeb. All I've, right, I've, I've been guilty <laughs> of it in the past. I've done it. I've in done my it, youth when I used I to have saying, to get dropped off for me at the venue and then picked up at the yeah, end. That was when yeah. I was. Wearing two shirts because yes. you don't want to lose one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you guys, did you guys see that I was at the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Anyway, um, so I'm not really sure what it's doing out. It kind of seems like it's not raining, so maybe there's hope for the. That'd be good news. This is the inaugural. Uh, inaugural gr- Missouri Growers Cup. And it is. It, has it already started? Uh, uh, it uh, well, doors open at two, I believe. Okay. okay. Events open at and two. You got what a twenty-minute um, drive-ish to get yeah, there. Yeah, something like that. We're we're just we're looking to get there around three three thirty. Uh, we we are going to see a, a buddy and his friend perform. Uh, they got some local acts, so nice. we're, we're going to go nice. see If I Die in Iceland. Okay. Um, and uh, I think I think they're a two-person act, but. Uh, Mike Eager is a real cool guy. He's uh, performing with that outfit. So we're going to go check out uh, them performing for this big cup. And, uh, uh, oh, who are the headliners? Uh, 77 Jefferson or something like that? I don't don't remember the... I might be totally off base. Uh, some cool. I want to say that's uh, the secondary headliner. And then Paul Wall is is headlining. And I think like kind of... One of the hosts, um, they got like some. Uh, so this is a, 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 a growers um, cup, growers but, the, cup, but there's live com- music competition. It's a live music festival, and okay. they're announcing the winners in between each act. Winners of, of the the judging competitions of the strains. Okay, of so the there cup. is all right, so like all right. awards for I think I saw awards for like best pre rolls, best edibles, concentrates, whatever. So, oh wow, man, um, that's hardcore. Yeah. That's smart people shit. So and then they got like a whole team of like local and regional uh, judges that are wow uh, that are doing the votes on that. And cool. So everyone just kind of comes and checks it out, checks out different vendors of different like local companies and right uh, uh, manufacturers, what whatnot. Well, um. I so way back whenever when we were, were very first messaging was it our conversation where you asked about the whole band coming to do um, this um, some more maybe I, I li- at least mentioned asked okay. if we could all come along because uh, when I was initially going to try to come by was for the a show, show the Father's yes. Day show that we yes. played here in town and well we ended up that was our first trip in our eighty seven uh, Dodge conversion van. Uh, band van so uh, okay. it was it was a little on the sketch side we wanted to be sure we could get there and uh, back right, home right. so we, we we just didn't even worry about it then okay but, uh, okay well but yeah I, when whenever that we happened, did talk about it uh i my cousin does uh sound for umkc and he helped Good deal. like i had some but this room existed but i had it was a shittier version and so i had yeah. somebody and then uh i bought a bunch of shit and it was kind of like, now what? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so he came and helped me sort of learn a little bit. To um, so when when that happened, I was like, how would I add, uh, you know, a mic and a ch- for another? And he was like, yeah. he was like, not with that. Yeah, he, really? he's, Here's what you need, and then here. And I was like, F- I, 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 yeah, I can't. Yeah. So totally. I wish that it was like uh, more suited to. Uh, accommodate people on <laughs> but uh, i'm sorry um, it's all right i would love if you want to come do your i would love to have you and you can sit on the couch yeah, or yeah, not you eat. Bet. You bet. um so uh, this this is we welcome to co- but it's you know as you can see it's appreciate kinda, that and i you know we had all discussed that from the get-go like cool, hey, this is what cool. it is you yeah know, this is what a setup is and you know if you know obviously uh me being the point of contact uh and you asking about the specific list of things for us to discuss. Yeah. And, yes. Um, yes. So we've all three got very different tastes. In yeah. That anyway, so, so different you, conversation I mean, points. Um, yeah, it's funny. Like, 
uh, I never never considered that. That or uh, I've talked to people that have uh, you know uh, done live music on their things like that. That's, oh yeah, you could easily backtrack through what you've, who you've already visited with and expand. Well, all of it's their like it, that's right? that's not you know it's not an option to. really for me to have people perform live music. I mean, I. I'm not sure. to perform, no. I meant uh, their connections, having them on as guests, right? So it's with that, different. Like I never considered tastes. multiple guests. I never considered mu- or having uh, musicians showcasing people. I also yeah. never considered uh, doing it remotely until somebody asked me to come to them, mm-hmm. and I was like, I think I could. Yeah. So I've I've actually done it twice now. Yeah. So it's some th- some things you can fold into and oh, yeah. some things you can't. So Yeah, and I've uh I, I work uh with the MHK music scene and um we've done some interviews uh you know when I left uh when Ryan and I started doing stopped doing Noise from Ryan's basement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was in Manhattan. I wanted to still be involved in the local music scene and I still wanted to do behind the scenes stuff, production work and try to volunteer my time, but also networking to get other gigs and stuff. To right. The do pay a little bit, but right. you know, I have a stable job, so I'm not too terribly worried about that. I just want to be involved in the music scene at one point or another. Anyways, I got uh, really heavily involved in the MHK music scene, uh, MHK Music Network is the more formal name, but um, and I still do that now. We do MidFest every year, and I'm on the board for that. And uh, But... Um, uh, <laughs> where the hell was I? <laughs> kind of trailed <laughs> off there. Wanting to stay involved. I uh, wanted to stay involved. Uh, oh, we were doing interviews. Networking. We, we started yes, trying to do yes. interviews again because they had done a little bit in the past, but I was like, hey, I have some experience doing this from Ryan's basement. So we started doing interviews. What I was going to say is, um, we, we've even done a few like uh, yeah video call like on the computer like through like Zoom or whatever style that, and that was that interviews and it worked okay nope it was not, it was boring a yeah little bit. yeah it was, it was kind of dull it's been it was okay but I, my thing about that is uh, I certainly have options well but yeah of course but you know pandemic was weird like we're everybody's at home and uh, what is the are we gonna die like you know all this shit and then um, everything shifted well we were already like accelerating somewhat aggressively in right. online ordering yeah right and and, and uh, you know casualties of that are human interaction yeah uh and then pandemic and we just kind of floored it and it's like you don't really have to go anywhere for anything True. anymore True. uh it's just boop boop and it's delivered and we can zoom but no i don't like that i want it cool so look at that anyway uh Bandcamp, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Spotify, all of it, all Apple of it. Music, yep. Stony Doom with a hyphen for good reason. I know now. Stony Doom. Uh, Google it however you want. Yes, You'll find it. I yes. promise. I got. I got to go on record and say um, that um, I don't understand MHK. Manhattan is one word. I don't know why people don't, are doing that. And 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 don't start with I didn't and do to, it. And to that end, if it. you share a uh, uh, rock chalk jayhawk hashtag as R C J H, I I, f- I feel like driving to your house and punching you. I don't know why that happened. It's just one R C J. It's one word. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I, I've been, but I've been seeing lots of uh, band, folks, musicians. Uh, it, it's like uh, MHK. I'm like, what? Why? Yeah, Why I, is it not MK? Why is it not big, something else? I guess else? because uh, two syllables in Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, two or three. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it could have been LAK, Little Apple, Kansas. I don't know. <laughs> Little Apple, Kansas. Anyway, uh, Stoning Doom. Check out their uh, stuff. Uh, New album content is, is sort of in infancy stage. It's but brewing. Cool. It's brewing. It could be coming. We weren't planning on it. Um, and what I was going to say earlier, we weren't even planning on performing live, but maybe once ever. And <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I shit you not, a year a year and a half later, we've already played a dozen shows wow. pretty much. That's so fun, I think, right? It's, it's fun. It's awesome. Cool. We're, we're blown away and very humbled and right on. Uh, just, just enjoying it. Just well, having fun. Appreciate you guys being here. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Thanks.